Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, Doug Garnett. My name is John Fahey. Joining me as ever, the prettiest boy under the sun, three children stacked in a trench coat, each child ripped, shredded muscularly with a huge cock, two kids out of three, uh, uncut. gay, uncut, uncut. bi, and, bi trans. and transgender, of course, if you believe in gender, which we don't. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Aaron Joseph Peter, how are you? I'm good. I'm feeling real good tonight. Hydrated. Yeah. Mm, hydrated. Uh, fully stretched out. Very nice. Uh, mind limber. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, Matt. Matt is also to my right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, handsome right. Matt Brousseau. Yeah, there you, you are. Right, thank you. And joining us today, very special guest, rarity on the program, <laughs> Mr. Shane Moss is here. Hey. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me. Of course. I am. I, I'm especially rare to this program. Yeah. Me being here this one time. We uh, <laughs> The rarest. We really don't have guests in general. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. that. And yeah. I was like, wow, I guess I'm very special. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's, right. You said it, pal. That's, that's what I told myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell don't, everybody. Don't say any other story. Yeah. <laughs> These guys don't let anybody in the building. Mm-mm. And we don't let him out either, so. Uh-oh. Sorry. Now, Shane, uh, you uh, you do a podcast. Yeah, it's that, called Here We Are. Here We Are. It's a uh, science podcast. Science, and then you also do uh, science and comedy in the live show. Yeah, it's called Stand Up Science. I have two professors and a second comedian join me in every city. Yes, and then you were saying the psychedelic version of that show. It's called Head Talks. Uh. Yeah, that's select cities. So now, There's not psychedelic researchers everywhere, so I, sure. I can only... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to get those guys I, I, out of the basement. I, I got to find. I got to find <laughs> someone. Well, it's the way the laws are. so yeah. it's near impossible. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I have uh, 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 anthropologist Sophia Rocklin, who is uh, lives in Peru, studying ayahuasca a lot. Mm-hmm. And so she's often with me. And then I, I need to find people that can tag along with me for, on the road for a while. Yeah. But the stand up science, I find up. I find it's a different show every time because there's sure. local professors everywhere. Yeah, so. it really kind of runs the gamut of uh, of. Uh, of anything science based but I feel for the most part I, I stay away from chemistry and physics right. the very big and the very small <laughs> right. it seems I stick with kind of the human condition yeah. sort of stuff yeah. a lot of psychology there is stuff. a lot yeah. of um you know, head head based stuff, even when it's not head based. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Pers- personality, anthropology, right. yeah, in, uh, neuroscience, impulse, biology, which we'll get into later. Yeah, God. Ooh. And, uh, and that's because you don't believe in physics. Uh, I actually like physics. I just feel like uh, I feel like physics in global warming get all of the science yeah. attention. Mm-hmm. Like if someone's going to listen to something science related, it's either global warming or physics. So I just feel like that's covered. Yeah. And so uh, my podcast is is things that are less covered. Hopefully, yeah. that's kind of how we feel about true crime. I think. Yeah, we we're have, like they've they've got that. Yeah, there's another. We're just gonna do serial weird killer yeah. podcasts out yeah. right now that we don't need to have another serial killer. Yeah, for, we'll we'll do a, a yeah. every once in a while, some, only some, if they kill them in a weird way. Yeah, or, yeah, for weird. Yeah, you don't up. see a lot of like gay Nazi wrestlers on the no, history. Yeah. No, no, you really don't. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, yeah, but man, I really wish I really wish you did. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy, man, I was hacking fe- off. That guy's like, I'm such a fan now. You, oh, complete psychopath, trailblazer. Uh, but we did. We we did put together some sciencey stuff for you. Really? Yeah, we actually curated the episode to you. What? That's how big a deal wow. you are oh, in boy. this room. I'm, I'm scared now that I'm going to be a failure. I feel like I don't know a lot about the history of science. Oh, I just perfect. know like no, no. the concepts. I'm bad uh, with names, but wh- I'm excited to hear it. Well, I mean, you definitely understand uh, stupidity. Oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I do especially. Uh, uh, I think that's kind of where we're going. Uh, some of it might be a little bit more... Physics-y, but um, that's okay. I like physics. I, I think enjoy. I think part of the thing is too is that you find uh, you know with doing the biographies of these types of people of that is so much of of the personality based stuff. Of course, goes into the yeah. research and what they're looking for and why. Uh, in sometimes in some fucking just daffy ways. Um, I just want to kick it off with a little a little guy. Uh, which I just I just found out from these fellas the other day that uh, Freud was mad into uh, cocaine. 
Big time, yeah. yeah. Nice. When he found it, he was just writing about. I, I don't know tons about Freud, but he was yeah. writing a lot about uh, just the the many many benefits of cocaine. Yeah. And some years later, he's like, I'm starting to feel like I might have made some errors with this cocaine stuff. I was. It was morphine. Morphine was the one. Yeah. Freud was uh, odd though. That's that was he was in the kind of hysteria time period where yeah. where women were like w- women weren't supposed to be uh, horny ever yeah. so if they got horny they called it hysteria which was right. just like this general restlessness yeah, yeah. and then, hysterectomy comes from the same right. root yeah and then they would um so they would go to their doctor to masturbate them and yeah. then next thing you know there's like a line around the block of, of sure. ladies wanting and then and that's like when the first dildos and vibrators came out because because these doctors just had their hands full. Hey, <laughs> and they they were just so overwhelmed. I just can't Sears imagine <laughs> any and doctor so, like just watching some lady fucking squirt and shit and just be like, oh, just, okay. uh, another hard day at the office. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> and yeah, so if you if you see like the first vibrators, they were like these huge motorized, is like a huge motor, and like it had a huge like bike chain attached to it. And then you know, it's, like, if you this, look at the right videos, they. Still do. They're all gas powered. Yeah, steampunk yeah, fuck Netflix. Uh, 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 Timepiece. Yeah. Period yeah. piece. Period piece. Period yeah. piece. Yeah. Um, the early Sibians. Yeah, and I, my understanding is that Freud was Freud was one of the like that was like one of his jobs for a while, and he was just so bad at getting women off mm-hmm. that he developed these like bizarre theories about like how oh, like. God. W- Women, like that's when he had like women shouldn't have clitoral orgasms. That's a immature orgasm. <laughs> and and uh, it, was because, it, was it looks like a baby dick. Find... <laughs> yeah. It looks like a baby dick. How could it possibly have any sort of adult? <laughs> Good God! What a horrible, yeah. horrible man. Uh, well, here, here's some fucked up shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. He his you know um he he becomes friends with this guy at you know some big kind of convention thing and he he's just an ear nose and throat doctor and his name is Wilhelm uh, Fleece not Fleiss but Fleece F L F L I E S S and um, he. He starts, he starts telling Freud that there's all of these uh, genital spots uh, uh, located in the nose. Oh. Which govern sexual function. Cool. <laughs> and, <laughs> there is actually erectile tissue in the nose, and uh, it's it's part of how we it's part of how we um, uh, how we smell like three dimensional in, in stereo. Uh-huh. Is, is that uh, is that you? Um, uh, so one of your noses is always like slightly plugged. You don't notice it unless you have a cold, mm. and then the nostrils switch or uh-huh. one of your nostrils, and it's because some of the olfactory receptors can can pick up on molecules that are moving quickly mm. and some pick up on ones that are moving slowly so it switches back and forth and that's why you never know what a good coke nostril is it's <laughs> right. like, just it goes, it out. It's like yeah. it, because the nose gotta, is trying to find out if the train's in. coming or right. whatever yeah, depending you go, like, on your I nasal. went right last time <laughs> so I left this time yeah. oh not so fast so what you're saying is depending on your olfactory boner yeah. will let you know where exactly it smells like shit yeah, yeah. but to do they, but they're, but that's not really related to sex. No, <laughs> this, no. So they but started. He, he was talking about straight up. This is nose play. This is yeah. <laughs> and um, he, he, his hypothesis was that masturbation and condom use mm. uh, disrupted these spots, and he called that the nasal reflex. <laughs> yeah. And Freud ran with this shit, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he. <laughs> I, 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 I like to, You're not getting women I, off either, huh? I, I mean, I think that meeting is just like you sit down, you're having a couple of drinks, and, and and the first guy was just like, well, what if your nose was like where all the good yeah, sex uh, stuff was happening? And Freud's like, um, I need to leave. And yeah. then goes back, starts frantically writing a book a lot of, on cocaine. A lot of, a lot of this, oh, this, that the was nose. the thing, is that the they, they started talking about... Um, 
<laughs> governing se- sexual impulse yeah. by doing nasal surgery. Oh, oh what? Fuck. And this this is shit that led to oh, later on Freud would be like burn all of my correspondence with him. I want there to be no record of this. <laughs> yeah. Because people said later that it, it almost destroyed psychoanalysis <laughs> yeah. as, oh my God. as a thing because it was so embarrassingly stupid. Yeah, yeah. And so he he thought, yeah, he could fix... Wait, what year is this? This, uh, this is... Let's see here. Because I'm thinking, like after World War One, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the uh, the wounded without noses probably didn't get laid a lot. They're like, all right, see, <laughs> it's must be got it something <laughs> to do with the nose. It was just, I mean, yeah, it was, it was. Um, I mean, the 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 worst part of it happened in 1895. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it, so it was hot years in Vienna. But a part part of it was too is that Freud just really liked this guy. Yeah, he had a good and coke I, hook is, up. This, is this where the what is it the Urban Dictionary like the Angry Dragon or whatever is that where that oh, came you from? Son of a... that's, <laughs> I don't know what that's that is. When you finish in someone's nose. Oh my and god! Then it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it comes out their nostrils. Comes out. <laughs> oh, is that like what? Like a dragon. Oh, maybe it, maybe it's when they when they swallow it you make them laugh. Oh, oh, oh There's funny. one of those. You too. guys can get girls to laugh. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking about getting into psychoanalysis. Freud, Freud himself has uh, fleece operate on his nose two times. Uh. <laughs> Get them shit out! He's like, dude, I want to fuck my mom. Can you fix this? Yeah, get just get in, in there, there and get rid of all this shit that makes yeah. me want to fuck my mom. Also, using coke as an anesthetic, of course, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have some for yourself, Doctor White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in 1895, Freud is treating a woman named Emma Eckstein, and um, she goes to him for uh, like. Depression during her period and just cramping and He says this is obviously Excessive masturbation bringing about the nasal reflex. Yeah, <laughs> your husband isn't using condoms. That's right? what that's what he comes up with. <laughs> the nasal reflex he Sends her to fucking this psychopath, right? And she almost dies hemorrhaging Because of like the bleeding the, uh, on account of the nose surgery. Yeah, oh, they just got in there with a the drill, or what was the? Dude, they used one of those vibrators you were talking <laughs> yeah. about. He goes, he's like, all, all of your, all of your neuroses sexually are going to be totally cured by this. <laughs> she almost dies from the infection. Mm. She, uh, doctors, um, s- doctors saved her. They get hit, they get her out of his hands, um, and they pull out like two feet of gauze that he stuffed up there and what? left, <laughs> left inside her nose. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was looking for that. Yeah. And, uh, and like, ta-da! <laughs> she was, she was like, clown. She was fucked up facially for the rest of her life. But he got rid of all the other neuroses. Just, uh, well, just surgery now. Well, no one would fuck her afterwards, so <laughs> uh, dude, problem solved. The crazy thing is, is that Freud, Freud told, Freud told his buddy later, he goes, don't worry. Her bleeding was the result of hysteria because of excessive excessive sexual attraction to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why she almost died in the surgery. Not because she was so you're a horny. maniac that left a fucking pair of tube socks in her head. You fucking psycho. <laughs> because her tiny little b- b- baby clitorectomies <laughs> are freaking out. Yeah, with her preschool orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. My first orgasm over here. But she, um, she, she had, yeah, she had like part of like her face like caved in on the side for the rest of her life, and she didn't even blame Freud. She became a psychoanalyst later herself, and uh, yeah, she was yeah stayed friends with uh, with him and uh, with Freud, not the guy who with Freud, yeah, not with that other fucking maniac. Yeah, um, I mean it was a good try. Uh, yeah, and so this, <laughs> yeah. you know, do, do you know about yeah. biorhythms? Um, depends on what you're talking about. It's it's fucking more pseudoscience. That's about like the the numbers of life and what's gonna happen. It, oh yeah, total. That, in, yeah, okay. That's what he gets into after nasal reflex shit. Uh-huh. Um, so he. Um, yeah, there's a lot of heavy heavy drug use, not sleeping, and numerology. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. Together really, lot, really lot, well. lot of counting. Yeah. Um, but Freud, yeah, Freud later on is like, oh fuck, like everything is gonna be lost about all these advances I made. So he's like, he's like, burn the correspondence. But uh, I think it was Marie Bonaparte, who's the grandniece of Napoleon, 
was like, you know, I'm keeping all of this correspondence. So that was the only thing that led to this coming out historically. Wow. <laughs> because she was like, no, this needs to be preserved no matter what. And she helped get Freud out of uh, Nazi Germany. Mm. Oh, shit. So, yeah. She's the only reason why we know about this fucking madness. Oh my god! There, there is like a, there, there is like a lot of synesthesia that people have where there's like a, a lot of crosstalk between the senses where people like see music or whatever. Right. Psychedelics sometimes bring this on, but every everyone has a little bit of it here and there. And there is um, like in the body map in the brain, the the feet and the genitals are kind of right next to each other, and they think that's why people have foot fetishes is because uh, there's just like crosstalk between those stimulating the foot is stimulating really? the genitals uh. so maybe just this one di- and a lot of times people with synesthesia just think everyone in the world sees the world the same way that they do right so this guy might have just had like maybe he did have a nose that just got him real worked up yeah and then he's like Projected this is, his I'm world telling you. you if you want to come everywhere you gotta get in that nostril <laughs> I'm sneezing I'm coming I don't know what I want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I guess it's like a little death, kind of, right? Uh, yeah, a little sneeze. Mort, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, some it, kind of violent. Yeah, you didn't know. Uh, didn't um, Prince of Porn say that when you when you orgasm, you're, you're close to death. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> When you're old, you should. Yeah, yeah. A lot of pseudoscience from a yeah. fucking 1983 porn weirdo and fucking. You want to hear some sad missteps? Yeah. So here, I'll, this is this this first one, and it is uh, it's a little bit comical. It has pretty uh, kind of tragic results, but that's had, always always funny on this show. Good first step. So uh, when they first, when people used to learn autonomy, it was or uh, anatomy. Not autonomy. <laughs> uh, autonomously learning anatomy. They would they would be dissecting corpses, and yeah. and that's how they would learn where the parts were, and they'd uh, um uh, you know uh, investigate um uh, different parts of the body. And when X rays came around, the first X ray devices were you you were like sitting to be x-rayed and people would come in with uh, like a stomach ache or whatever and the doctor would be like well I got this new x-ray machine that they're just uh, they can't wait to use this thing oh god and then they were x-raying people's stomachs and then they would check it against like what they knew from autonomy from people laying flat oh god and they'd be like oh well here's the clear problem (laughs) your stomach has dropped and so their solution (laughs) Was to it appears so... you've swallowed your genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> There's solution. <laughs> I can see you right there in black and white, pal. That's a dick and balls in your gut. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they started sewing people's stomachs up. Oh my god. They'd be like, oh, oh we just got it. No, no. problem. Quick fix. We'll just sew oh, your stomach no. up. up. Too low. Yeah. <laughs> it's too low. Jesus. Too low. Oh. Well, I mean, is it how much, <laughs> much of scaffolding in there? How much different is that? Than, listen, you're eating too much. So we're just going to take this uh, swing line red stapler here. Yeah. And yes. just do it. Shut yeah. real quick. Yeah. And then you won't be fat anymore. Yeah. Bingo. Still pretty, still pretty crazy stuff. It yeah. is, it is, yeah. I also yeah. like to think that they were giving a lot of people stomach cancer. Like, I, sit in front of this ex, new x ray <laughs> machine for four hours, yeah. and then we'll tell you what's up with you. Maybe. Well, we, we couldn't tell what was wrong on your first visit, but now there are some very clear lumps. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some needles in there. Uh, Two feet of gauze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the machine was be getting better because we're, we're finding more stuff all the time. Uh, another Another related thing. Uh, which is much sadder was uh, <laughs> was they uh, they um, so early on you could uh, uh, there's a period of time when you could really only dissect like um, uh, it, you could only give an autopsy on like poor people there's a stigma of autopsies people weren't donating their bodies to science and stuff right and so they were only 
um, examining poor people, and then uh, and they live a little differently. Uh, eventually, <laughs> and they live very differently, <laughs> and and so they're you know figuring out what parts of the brain should be what size from people that are like malnourished, mm. and then sudden infant death syndrome started becoming this this thing mm-hmm. uh, that they were trying to get down to the bottom of, and so then like wealthier people uh, or well off people were then. Um, uh, you know, bringing their because they wanted to know what happened. Yeah, of course. And and then they what they were finding was that I think it was the thalamus was uh, quote unquote larger um, in these babies. It is part of like the the stress response system, mm-hmm. and and it, so it's it shrinks in a, in a very stressed like poor child mm-hmm. that's malnourished and everything. And but it was normal in these babies, but because they're only used to seeing the small one, mm. they thought that the normal ones were abnormally large. And so they were like, well, here's like a solution, a little preventive preventative care on babies is, is we'll just on babies we'll we'll just um uh, uh we'll just get in there and um uh, what do they use like uh, oh what what, it, what what's the, like the radio waves like the um um oh they were they were shrinking um um oh, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, like Ra- radioactivity. What's the? Oh, uh, no, just, uh, um, you mean like radio surgery, like they do with cancer uh, and stuff like that? Like radiation. Yeah, radiation. Yeah. Radiation. I don't know why I can't think of it. So they were they were radiating ah. perfectly healthy babies. Yeah. Thalamuses. Jesus now, Christ. Shrink them. Now see, now see their death isn't going to be so sudden. So much as a <laughs> long, uh, prolonged yeah. process. Which, which is how you know yeah. it's working. <laughs> Bloods. Slow. Yeah. Science. Science. Yeah. 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 So, fortunately, now science is perfect, but it used to be a real nightmare. Ooh, you know, uh, what, 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 what was that? What was that bullshit? Uh, when they'd be fucking feeling your head for bumps? Phrenology. Phrenology. Yeah. Phrenology. Yeah, that was, uh, and and the guy that thought of that, he hypothesized that a uh, smaller brain meant that you were you, that you weren't as smart. Yes. And it would say like, this is why. Um, this is why like women or like different races or whatever aren't as intelligent and everything. Yeah. And that was, and in his autopsy, they found out that he had a much smaller brain. Yes. Than his skull, his person. skull was twice as thick as the, as the average person. Yeah. Couldn't uh, through his b- bizarrely. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, there's no way those bumps matter when your skull's that thick, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I think John Tyler had, you know, his head examined. And fucking uh, Arthur Conan Doyle had had shit about oh, it was very popular. guys having big hats in the fucking Sherlock Holmes stories. That was oh. like phrenology was like everywhere for a minute. Hot, hot, super and science. and people would uh, they would wrap their babies' heads. Mm. Well, that goes back even to like you know ancient Peru. In ancient Central America, they and like, what, it just, and Egypt too. They like, do a bunch of mushroom. No, they made them, people. They had, they had these <laughs> xenomorph alien heads. Yeah, uh, do you, you know why they call it the Mad Hatter? Is because there was mercury in the lining of of People top pass. hats, yeah. and then so oh. they were wearing mercury and going insane Jesus from it. Christ. And they're like, "Oh, so I guess crazy people are just drawn to top hats." Yeah. <laughs> all these, all <laughs> these <laughs> haberdashers. <laughs> <laughs> Big that hat is. Yeah. And why, why, Which why? is why they went out of style, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> it's self selection. <laughs> imagine go, imagine going to the haberdasher, and he's just an insane person. You're like, yeah. he's gonna fix my head. Great. <laughs> You look great. It's got crazy deals. <laughs> yeah. What a bargain. Given uh, away. I got something about x rays. You bring it up x rays. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Uh, well, let's take a, a little quick break first. Okay. And then we'll come right back. And we're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is okay. It is. <laughs> no, okay. Matt. Yeah. yeah, you were gonna you were gonna share a little X-ray or something? Yeah. So I brought a little, a very a tiny little thing about uh, a, a fun moment in the discovery of X-rays. <laughs> <laughs> fun moments in science. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing with X-rays is they didn't. It it was called an X-ray because it's an unknown ray. 
Mm-hmm. The X is for unknown. Oh, mm. like X Men. It wasn't for porno. Yeah, oh. the triple X. X right? is for Xavier. You know this better than most. <laughs> yeah, they're extraordinary. They're they're, they're unknown men. <laughs> they're good. <laughs> and women. <laughs> uh, so so. Uh, the, the kind of, the big, the, well, the big published discovery was by this name, uh, Wilhelm Röntgen, uh-huh. this German man. Um, so many fucking Germans in the science game. Yeah, Wilhelm. I think, assume he's maybe he's Austrian, who knows? Who's to say? So now, uh, he was like, uh, with all of his colleagues, he was a guy who, he repeated every colleague's experiments. Because he, I guess he loved science and maybe didn't trust him or something. Oh, but he was like stealing, think, stealing jokes, kind of. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think that's like the, par- the paramount good practice of science is. is repeating yes. people's yeah. experiments. Yeah. Right. Man, fuck this guy. <laughs> Joke thief. <laughs> I did that already. Uh, it's I, a nose clip. <laughs> didn't replicate. Yeah. I had that drill in my nose all night. Didn't, didn't come. come. Not once. <laughs> Flat everywhere. <laughs> I got this gauze, though. So it's 1895, and he's repeating one of his colleagues' experiments with uh, the Crookes tube. And so the Crookes tube was a thing that was invented 20 years earlier by William Crookes. It pioneered the study of vacuum tubes. Mm-hmm. And it was a glass tube in uh, kind of like a light bulb shape that we have today. Mm-hmm. And there's a metal plate on one end and a metal plate on the other end. And you put, a, um, uh, you put power, you run a current into one of the plates, and you can see it jump through the vacuum tube to the other plate mm-hmm. and you get this little bright little light so if you put some if you put if you put some sort of picture or or shape the light will make a shadow with the shape mm. and so they they didn't know these were electrons they just knew they had something and so they're like all right so one of his colleagues Runkin's colleagues uh, discovered that if you put a, lo- a little small aluminum foil window in the tube that the current will then run jump out of the window into the air and like give a little a little pop. Mm. And so he's just fucking around, just repeating this experiment. And uh, I think it was from Philip Leonard, Leonard. And he had done this with phosphorescent chemicals on uh, a piece of cardboard. And using this, he had kind of discovered, I think he had discovered cathode rays. Hmm. And so Runkin's doing this, but instead of using phosphorus, uh, phosphorescing, phosphorescing chemicals, he uses luminescent barium. Which is radioactive. Uh- Oh, well, we all know what that means. <laughs> oh, boy. And so uh, he, he puts up this like piece of cardboard with the barium, and he, he, he runs the experiment, and just out of the corner of his eye, he sees this little flash uh, just somewhere on his table. Hmm. And one of the stories is that it was another plate with barium, and another story is that one of his students, as a joke, took barium and finger-painted an A on a piece of paper. <laughs> And he, uh, Runkin was colorblind, so all he would see is just like this bright little flash. Hmm. And he's like, I don't know, what the, what the hell is this? So he keeps repeating it, and then he, he tries, he puts a book up in, in between the plate and the glass, and he has a bookmark with a key in it, and he sees the key. He's like, what the fuck is this? Am I hallucinating? What is this? And he keeps putting other objects on, keeps seeing through them, and then he hel- at one point he takes a, a, gla- a metal screw, and he holds it up, and he sees his bones, and he thinks he's just got insane. Oh, my God. He's like, this is- holy shit. So this is the original X-Man. Yeah. And he won't, he won't tell anybody because he's afraid that they're going to call him crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cut your nose off, dude. So to prove them that he's not crazy, he spends the next seven weeks in the lab taking his meals there and barely talking to his family and friends. Yeah. He's probably not hungry either. Yeah. (laughs) Fucking full of radiation and shit. (laughs) Mm, Boy. (laughs) And he keeps putting other things and other things. And he, again, the entire time he thinks he's hallucinating. And he even writes to his wife. He says, I'm doing work that will make people think that old Rojin has gone crazy. And he keeps doing it. And one day he just like, his wife is like, what the hell's going on? And he brings her in and she holds up her hand with with her ring on it. Mm. And she sees... She assumes she's going to die. That she assumes she just saw a premonition that she is going to die. Wow! She saw her hand, her skeleton, and the ring. Yeah, and then R- Runkin was like, "Oh, thank God, this is great. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna die too. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've relieved all of my my insanity by, yeah. by now believing in your own death. Right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. does she also die from the radiation? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I mean, old Rojan. <laughs> yep. Oh, crazy old Rojan. Oh. <laughs> but no, then he published this asshole. paper, and because he had spent seven weeks doing it, every colleague who was like, did you try this? He was like, yeah, I did everything. Yeah. It was, it was foolproof. So his insanity, or his fear of insanity. His fear of insanity, Let and him... then gen- kind of insanity. Yeah. But wait, using the finally... barium, he still... Yeah. He still was expecting the same results as this other guy's experiment? Even well, though... well, he was just... No, he had, I think he had already done that guy's experiment, and then he tried Oh, barium. okay, got it, got it, got it. Happened. Yeah. And then it freaked him out. And yeah. Then... Man. That first x-ray, yeah. yeah. That was a yeah. trippy one. Yeah. You ever wonder how many experiments went like that where someone's like, I'm not telling anybody about this. <laughs> I'm going to move on. And I'm going to close that. <laughs> Never looking in there again. You're going to say I'm completely out of my mind. <laughs> I'm going to ruin the world with this. Um, there, uh, like, you know, that, that this kind of, like, time that goes, I guess, like you could say from, like, 1850 to 1950 or whatever, it was, like, it's a lot popping off, you know? And there's a lot of, like, you know, fast money being made in, you know, new science and, and shit. And Better living through it. Chemistry, th- atomic energy. Right. Um, there's this one guy that just got sent on this impossibly wild goose chase that I think is, is super fascinating. Uh, Roger Babson. <laughs> you know anything about Roger Babson? <laughs> this guy was just some jerk off doing the, you know, the fucking uh, the Wall Street bullshit, and he was very successful with that. He, he was a very successful Wall Street jerk off. Yeah. Uh, but he was, you know, the great thing about rich people is that they, they can afford to go on like a hell of a goose chase. Yeah. That is the great thing, you know. Uh, and so he was, um, he was born in uh, Gloucester, Massachusetts, 1875, and. Um, he kind of uh, helped develop uh, what was what later became known as Andrew's Pitchfork, which was just kind of like seeing, you know, like economic trends and knowing where they'd go and stuff like that. He um, he predicted the crash in September 1929. Mm-hmm. He said uh, sooner or later a crash is coming and, and it'll be huge. Um, and later that day, it, like the market dropped like 3%. And then there was the big crash later to come mm-hmm. uh, later in 29. But he had like a, like ten commandments of of uh, investment, like keep spe- speculation and investment separate. Don't be fooled by a name. Be wary of new promotions. Give due consideration to marketability. Don't buy without proper facts. <laughs> In spite of all that, uh-huh. good advice. <laughs> he fucking he, he gets talking to Thomas Edison one day, and Thomas Edison would just say crazy fucking shit all the time. I'd guess to rich people. I, I mean, he was just a lot of trial and error guy. He was throwing a lot of spaghetti against the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if he thought it was good, he's not going to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you should try this. So he gives, he gives Babs, and this he goes, he's like, man, I'm telling you, you got to, you just got to find some kind of thing that just keeps, you know, shit from being affected by gravity. <laughs> And then you solve all the world's problems. <laughs> Actual shit. He's like, no more pooping. And he's like, <laughs> and, and he's telling the guy, he's like, he's like, there's gotta be some kind of alloy or something that'll do it. What? Yeah, because you just know, just make like, things float. Yeah, yeah you, <laughs> hey, can you just make things float. Yeah, and, and so Babson is like, it would be one of the greatest discoveries ever. You know, like you're oh, bound to find. God, I never thought about that. Just yeah. make things float. Yeah, of course. You're bound to find a compound that repels other compounds. <laughs> you know where? Where are the compounds? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, he goes, and he, he before anything happens. He has a press conference. <laughs> I love people oh, having, that's amazing. having a press conference over nothing. And he goes, he goes, listen, I'm no scientist, but I know how to figure stuff out. Trial and error, you know? And it's just another one of, like, the, the hubris of rich people, again, the, the Bloombergism, yeah. you know, of, like, you know, and he goes, um... That's, that was, like, before Gucci and everything. It's, it was, like, how do you advertise your wealth? It's like, well, I've been on 20 goose chases this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've flown in a hot air balloon around the world. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he goes, um, ex- you know, Edison was uh, experimented with 8,000 materials before he found, you know, the filament for the light bulb. And he goes, um, you know, there's no, there's no reason to uh, believe that we can't have a gravity screen. A gravity screen? <laughs> yeah, like something you stand on and you don't fall down. <laughs> like the ground. <laughs> 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 Above the ground is what he meant. But he, uh, he starts a, a research facility in uh, New Boston, New Hampshire. Great, great name. New Boston, New Hampshire. 
And, and All brand new, baby. And it was it was deliberately it was deliberately chosen um, because he he said it would be without of the blast radius if a bomb hit actual Boston. <laughs> So, so he goes to the municipal. Wow, he, he predicted that one too. He, he goes to the municipal daddies years early. in New Hampshire uh, or New Boston, New Hampshire, and he goes, "Listen, he goes, let's put a sign, <laughs> a sign that says New New Boston, the safest place from a nuclear explosion." And they're like, "Let's just say a safe place. We don't want to. We don't want to bring up all the negative yeah. implications of a nuclear blast." And he's like, all right, you know? Like, I mean, you're, you're living in the house just like 10 feet from that sign. You're like, wait, which side am I? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, um, he, uh, oh, I got to tell you this, too. And uh, the fucking, um. If you didn't live here, you'd be dead by now. <laughs> yeah, it's totally that, yeah. Thank God you chose my place. Anyway, I'm setting up some shit down the road where we're going to stop gravity. <laughs> So uh, he, I'm calling it a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he goes, he goes. I mean, he's doing thousands of experiments, oh. thousands about stopping gravity. And um, well, yeah, because the first I mean, ones he, were if working. He, if he knows how to trade on Wall Street, <laughs> yeah. right. if he knows how to look at a couple stocks and, and make some it inferences, stands to reason. And he so, should be able to conquer gravity. So I, I think I think the thing that kind of <laughs> really put the writing on the wall that this was a disaster was one simple question posed by somebody at the Institute. <laughs> somebody goes, if there is something gravity resistant, wouldn't it be in space by now? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Sweat pouring oh. down the face. Crap. Ooh, I uh, <laughs> uh it's the moon. The moon's gravity resistant. Uh, so so then then Jeez is gravity <laughs> resistant. They do the holes. He he would do <laughs> so. shit like uh then he's like, alright, it's not about resisting gravity, it's just about um studying it. Right, because it becomes too embarrassing. Yeah, and so uh, he he has like an essay contest, and actually this essay contest lasted for years and years. Uh, I mean, and pe- they take forever to write uh, yeah, people, a good essay. People people that won the Nobel Prize were winners of this fucking thing and stuff like that, and I think it's them trying to save face or yeah. whatever. But um, he would do exp- he, he he fucking bought Isaac Newton's bed for some reason. <laughs> uh, put that on display. Well, you yeah. know, he never came in it. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Newton died a virgin. Uh, really? Yeah. Did he lose his nose or something? Really? <laughs> yeah, Isaac Newton was a virgin his whole life. Yeah. Really? He was a very religious man. He was mm. born on Christmas. Mm. This guy kind of was too. Um, he uh, so then he goes into shit like, all right, well, if it's if it's a if it's like a like a, a high tide, the gravitational pull of the moon will make it easier for you to climb stairs. So he'd have dudes climbing stairs at high tide, and they're like, no, it still sucks. It's like, what? You know? And then, um, what the fuck? They would study the cycles of the moon and the gravitational pull, and they'd be like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, the bikini was invented on a full moon. And like, what? You know? <laughs> like, no shit like that. <laughs> then he goes, he, goes into, he goes into birds. Because <laughs> they, oh, they, they do, fly. Really. <laughs> and uh, you have a fucking <laughs> bird. That's a joke. <laughs> and uh, he... He just, you know, they give up on the fucking thing, and um, they have like a. He would give all these monuments from the institute to all these universities because he'd be giving them millions and millions of dollars, which he had to give. But he would make them put up like an anti gravitational monument on their fucking. So it, wait, what is an anti gravitational monument? It keeps falling. Well, no, it, it'd be like <laughs> fuck. It'd be like this is a gift. This is a gift from the anti gravity institute. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to stop airplane accidents. Like what? Uh. Like really dumb stuff. People would steal it and be like, it, it works. It must have, <laughs> students we're would, students have to would move these it. These anti gravity <laughs> things to the ground. Students would move it as a they joke, keep making away. fun of it that yeah. it floated uh, somewhere else. That was like yeah, the big on campus prank they would do. Oh my God. During, during the Depression, this guy, um, he fucking, uh, uh, all these uh, like fucking masons and shit are out of work. He's still masons. So he, he well, gets stones in, heavy <laughs> in uh, in in uh, Dogtown, Massachusetts, uh, which is a place he was like fascinated with. Yeah, because it's uh, called Dogtown. Dogs? He uh, he was like, you guys just go and um, just inscribe these things on these boulders for me. 
because oh. because you have no work and I want to give you guys money. Okay, oh. that's cool. So you would have to go on this hike where you would find these boulders to find all of them because there's like 30 of them and they're not necessarily on the trail. And you want, you got to find those boulders, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <you're, laughs> this, is, this is like, this guy is so out of goose chases. He's trying to create his own. Create, oh yeah. I, I have a team of people creating goose chases for me now. So, so ancient inscriptions. Yeah, there are, so there'd be, there would be, um, you'd find a boulder and it would say spiritual power. In and, English? Yeah. And, and then another one would be like, Prosperity follows service. Be on time. All right. But, it's, <laughs> it's but, like a boulder. but it looks like beyond time. <laughs> like it looks like one fucking word. <laughs> never try, never win. Ideas. This was this was the first hashtag. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, he started Bed Bath and Beyond. Kindness. <laughs> he started Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> he started forty-five year old divorce <laughs> decorations. <laughs> Keep out of debt. Keep out of debt. Loyalty. <laughs> Study. All right, I need a goose chase. I want you to go around and put a lot of like nice things on rocks. Yeah. And then one's got to be real <laughs> off. Like, one, <laughs> It's gotta be super mean. Eugenics. <laughs> <laughs> Selective reading. <laughs> Integrity, intelligence, use your head, be true, industry, huh? Yeah, you know, that's what he Courage. Does. Work. <laughs> Racial purity. <laughs> Save. <laughs> Initiative. Help mother. Help uh, mother. <laughs> help, comma, mother. mother. <laughs> uh, if work stops, values decay. <laughs> Dog town. <laughs> and then another one is get a job. <laughs> you bum. Get and a, a job. And another one is be clean. By the end, he just gets. <laughs> is this like like the, the prequel to They Live? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they give like yeah. sunglasses out to the people. They're like, whoa, this yeah. is breathing. <laughs> he was um, he had a patent for uh the parking meter. Uh, oh, this son of a bitch is responsible <laughs> for that? Cock sucking. <laughs> yeah. And it was it would run off your car's battery. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, yeah. He was the he was he was the If you don't plug in your car, how are you gonna pay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, how are you gonna be able to ticket? It's you? up to you. Yeah, you know? Like <laughs> that's what you seen the rock that I wrote on your system now. <laughs> like, so my so I pay and my my car pays too? <laughs> Read the stone. <laughs> <laughs> it's written in stone. Yeah. He was the presidential candidate in 1940 of, of the Prohibition Party. <laughs> in 1940? <laughs> and it turns out he can suck my dick, it says right here. <laughs> in rock? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine running 1940 prohibition like famous failure like what he was fucking he came in behind the Socialist Party candidate in 1940 right and Germany's running wild right now well you know like it's like it was that was the year uh, FTR won and you know obviously the Republican was second but yeah um, the 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 parking meter we we have come to know was first done by Carl McGee in I think Oklahoma City. And so he beat him to the punch on that one. Is McGee what he changed his name to after he invented the meter? It's <laughs> <laughs> probably meter. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or hey, parking. <laughs> hey, are you Steve Meter? Oh no. I'm Carl McGee, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it ran off your battery. <laughs> Uh, like what? So my so, I have a ticket <laughs> because I can't move my car. <laughs> it's fucking dead. Do Do you know the um the invention of of the of the Segway? I remember, and and I'm not sure that I have the story exactly right. It might be way too fun to be accurate, so I I don't know. But apparently, this guy had already made some other kind of impressive things, mm. and then he thought of the Segway, and he was and it was like. Oh, like, 
under wraps, like, holy shit, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. Dean I Kamen mean, is the it, guy's name. It really is, like, pretty interesting breakthrough technology. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and so, and he recognized that and was like, this is going to be, and so it was just called It. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I remember the rollout of It. And, when and, I was in yeah. Ireland, and he was like, I was reading the paper. It's going like, to change cities. There's going to be one in every home. Yeah, and completely. It's gonna, it's and people going, what is thing. It? And people are like, buying socks. <laughs> I don't know if the unveil, and like they they just open up the curtains and he's just sitting there <laughs> on a segue. Rocking back and forth. <laughs> like... <laughs> and now there's just video of like Mike Tyson on a hoverboard cracking his back. Yeah. yeah it's just would. one clap from his mom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. Very good, Dean. <laughs> Which I've actually taken, odd thing about me is I've, I, and so I should actually actually look into this fact for the next time I'm on one. But I've taken about nine to ten Segway tours really? in my life. Wow, yeah. man. Yeah. Do you been to Chicago? The first one was, I have, I yeah. have, yeah. Uh, the first one was in Paris, uh-huh. and it was just such a delightful time of, like, it, it's... There's nothing better than because I'm not into getting like a lot of touristy photos. But yeah. To get photos like in front of the Eiffel Tower and like Notre Dame and these like amazing, beautiful sure. uh, like pieces of architecture yeah. on a Segway <laughs> wearing a helmet. Oh, that's the worst part. Just really <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> and it's a very convenient way to zip around a busy city. Yeah. And they're for fun sure. to ride. Yeah. And then sometimes they give you a lot of instructions and other times not so much <laughs> so when they don't give you a lot of instructions that's always fun to like watch the people just when they're just like well you just get on it and you figure it out and then that's that's oh been, really yeah the fun happens but nobody yeah. wipes out right uh, like, I think I somebody saw, I mean well, the guy that invented it the guy died that invented on one. it went off of a cliff on yeah. one I don't he, know if he was, was the guy floppy. but somebody did die he was at least the owner of the company yeah it was yeah, a very yeah. high executive in the company died going off a cliff <laughs> Yeah, yeah, on his own property. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, was like, he, was he like, looking for one of those stones? It was like, 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 <laughs> like oh, you, you should have known better. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, sorry, real quick. The one thing about Babson. Oh, this, this asshole. The, the, the anti-gravity oh, yeah. guy. His, his sister drowned and he blamed gravity. No. He said gravity got a hold of her and pulled her down. Yeah. It's like, no, she's probably just an idiot like you. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm we gonna started like a Punisher campaign, <laughs> a one man war on gravity. I'm my war gravity. still goes on. Um, hey, now that you've fixed, uh, quote unquote, <laughs> fixed gravity. Um, can you get us back down from space? We're all floating <laughs> yeah. now. Our, I don't know how to forge Our car batteries need to be charged, but we're out there. <laughs> space. This, this ticket's going to be mad expensive. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Yeah, there's, um, some of these guys, like, you know, they get, <laughs> like, some of these guys get knighted and stuff. <laughs> oh, know? these idiots? Yeah. Like, yeah, Sir yeah. Francis Galton, you never heard of him? Mm. Oh, no. He was a cousin of Darwin. <laughs> just say like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh. Like, Sir Francis anything always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he Drake. got he got that at, like, 87. After, like, you know, all the dumb shit happened, you know, like. He had one good But he still, he still had some stuff, like, uh, he was one of the, one of the first uh, fingerprint guys. You know, uh, started that, you Narc. know, didn't really, you know, kill, kill the science, but, um, yeah, he got into the eugenics stuff big time, and he had a lot of fucking dumb shit. One time he got sick, and he's like, I'm gonna take every drug in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> Start with acid. <laughs> you, but, get, you get to cocaine, and then you're like, "All right, now I'm he, burning through the D's and the E's." And the- he got to croton oil and and just threw up, you know, because that's what it does, you know. And he, he, he's in Africa, and it was like like modern like Namibia or whatever, and he's he 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 sees the black woman's figure, and he's like, "Holy shit!" You know, and he's like, he gets out a sextant and stuff because he's like, "I can't do a tape," you know what I mean? Around these amazing tits or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. I used all my gauze in that lady's <laughs> nose. But uh, he's yeah, he um, he translates the results 
of measuring these women's bodies into like trigonometry shit and stuff and publishes it in like science journals. He he writes he writes, he writes a travel book. And I think it's still in print. It was a bestseller. I have scientifically proven that I like big bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm science not, cannot lie. Believe me, pal, you're gonna like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sir Francis mix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he was a knight of two. The, it's called The Art of Travel, and it's got tips like this. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> horses make useful windbreaks. It's like a horse's v fart. Is helpful to you? Wait, what? Not, yeah. not, not that not, like you, you could stand hide behind, behind one. No, I think probably like, it goes you. faster. <laughs> oh, that's the secret to anti gravity. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you got a gassy horse. If you have a sore throat, mix soapy water with gunpowder. Chug, okay. chug that down. <laughs> you won't have a throat to be sore. <laughs> sore feet. Break a raw egg in each boot. So this is the art of travel. This is the art of travel. Tips, tips like this, Aaron. I, I have, I have a tip. If you're traveling <laughs> to that guy's house for a visit, don't go around his house just opening jars <laughs> and smelling yeah. them. As as, yeah. Wait, was that? <laughs> Horse fart? I went to the refrigerator for some orange Close juice. Close that up! <laughs> so, so much of that going around. Yeah. I might get sick. <laughs> I'm going to need that in a minute. This is, this is the best tip in the entire book. Caught in the rain? Huh? Remove your clothing and sit on it to keep dry. Who the fuck was this guy? So was he just trolling? He was, he was knighted. He was I knighted. Think, is that? I mean, it keeps your clothes dry. <laughs> yeah, well, you're fucking man. Maybe. Is he, and then is you, he trolling? And then it wicks no, off of you. No, he's really, he's, he's, he's out of his mind. <laughs> you know, out out what, of your what, mind? Try giving people advice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He really, he believed in measuring anything. Like, everything and anything. A good show would be like, well, what could we actually do with that? Like, take uh, all yeah. of his bad ideas yeah. and then be like, well, what can we do with yeah. horse farts? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, a, like kind, of, for... kind of a myth busters, but like making it work. Yeah. You can use, you can use this. Myth boosters. <laughs> myth, <laughs> myth boosters. You... That's a solid <laughs> yeah. TV Copyright show. Copyright profiles. And <laughs> <laughs> all rights reserved. Show. You would, uh, <laughs> myth boosters. You... This is something you can actually use, Shane, because yeah. uh, you're, you're, uh, High quotient of live shows. Yeah, he uh, he uh, he compiled uh, <laughs> the boredom index, measuring the interest of audiences based on their fidgets. Oh wow! During a show, so there would be a meter like like mm. bored, stiff to highly entertained, whatever. There, boredom is a thing that that's still well studied today. Yeah, it's a painstaking task. <laughs> it's actually really fun. One, one of my favorite and most brutal studies is from the area of, of boredom or satiation, you know, uh -huh. right? and, uh, you know, studying like, uh, you, you know, you know, when, um, you're at dinner and you're like, I'm full right now, but, uh, and then someone's like, how about dessert? And I like, actually, I have, so there's a little more to fullness right. and satiation than like space in your stomach. There's all these variety of psychological ah. factors. So they study. And so they do these things to tease that stuff apart. And one of the most brutal ones is they'll have people come in, uh, tell, tell them what their favorite song is, uh -huh. and then they <laughs> oh, no. find the hook from that song and make them listen to it over and over again for like 30 minutes. Whoa. <laughs> and no one likes that song <laughs> yeah. afterwards. And yeah. then like, how can you get them to like the song again and all the different Does it involve factors. cocaine? <laughs> it involves... Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <after work. laughs> <laughs> I love it again. <laughs> it's um, it's it, variety. If you're reminded of how many other songs uh, you've listened to since that last time, and you yeah. trigger uh, that part of your so if it, same with restaurants. If you're like, oh, I just went to that restaurant last Friday. I don't want to go there again. Instead, if you if you are reminded of all of the restaurants you've been to before the following week, then it seems fresh again. So right. it's always weird. I would like imagine that. that now boredom is extinct or I eradicated. Think runs, I think it runs rampant. Do yeah. you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think, I think people it's... are more bored than ever. Why? It's alive. How, and how well. could you be bored now? It's, it's, it, because because you, you are possibly entertained all the time. I think you're quicker to get bored mm -hmm. because yeah. you're so used to being entertained. Like how often you remember standing it, in line? It's it's like I, I mean everything's. Um, 
But, you know, there's this hedonic treadmill, which is basically like one reward is great, and then you get used to it, and then you mm. get uh, two rewards is is now what one reward once was, and so yeah. you just got a raise, and now three rewards is like what one, uh, and and so everything is kind of like that. So I mean, you think about like think about the worst mo- like a. Uh, like one of the really bad Transformer movies or something. Yeah. If you took that back to like the it's early yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, his ears would be bleeding. People run for their lives. Totally, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, but, but boredom will, boredom I, will catch up with the times. Yeah. But do you think, I mean, I don't, I don't ever feel bored. Really? You're not no. a boring are you, person. Are, are you stressed a lot? I feel like I'm either bored or stressed. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, something's going on. <laughs> Some, either way. I got something in my I, I brain. Mean, I'm either, I'm either, yeah, probably stressed out or, or having a really good time. But I mean, if I could just open my phone and go down a Wikipedia hole and learn about this fucking jerk off yeah, yeah. any time I want, yeah. what excuse do I have to be bored? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Can it be, can, can that perspective well, cure boredom? No, there's still too many <laughs> like factory workers and shit. There's t- still too many people with like data entry jobs and stuff. Or we're yeah. being a crew Boredom factory. is still alive and well. Yeah. Uh, that that would be uh, that would be an interesting initiative, though. A good platform for you to run on. And, like <laughs> yeah. people aren't bored enough. We're bringing <laughs> yeah. boring back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boring company. Uh, one time, one time, but, but you'd need to do it in like a real like Noam Chomsky kind of a <laughs> kind of a tone. So. Manufacturing boredom. Yeah, I think that you know my idea is that maybe we just make things more boring than they. Are. Like, wow, that guy's really one time. One time, a guy I worked with, exciting. A, 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 a dude I worked with that was no, always you're not like getting it. He was always intense and like he had three kids and he always had shit going on. And one time I just asked him, I was like, what's your favorite thing to do, man? And he was like, be bored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes it is good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the uh it's the older person's like relaxation. Yeah. But as kids was like bo- insufferably boring to right. us. Now we're like, oh, I could go for a little more of that anti gravity machine you know. right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean some old man watching baseball. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. three hours. This uh, another World War Two documentary yeah, on yeah. the History Channel. This guy, uh, he did a, um, he did a, he did a, he did a fucking beauty map of England. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> like ugly, uh, beautiful. Where, ugly. Like, where, where was yeah. Newcastle? Uh, I don't know. He didn't say. It was covered uh, in soot. <laughs> yeah, that's, you could, couldn't even tell. This guy had. I feel eight... like the Scottish aren't terribly attractive. Can oh. I just say that? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. <laughs> and they really like it if you call them Scotch. <laughs> I find the Scotch to be particularly repulsive. <laughs> I think you can say that. I think that's like. Yeah, yeah you I think that's what they're going to do about it. Can their dresses. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen to this show. They wouldn't understand it. <laughs> I can't make out. A fucking weird fucking <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a Scottish person comment or it, it, it anything. Was, yeah, fuck them. No. <laughs> uh, I, 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 oh, well, sorry. Am I cutting? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm about to. I'm okay. about to, to to kill it. But continue. <laughs> Oh, I was just, I was thinking of a, a few of the things that you said reminded me of um, w- with phenology or what, what's it called? Phrenology. Phrenology. Fren- phrenology. And then, and then the thing with beauty, there's a, there was this um, like uh, detective or, or something like that or a PI or something. He came up with the idea like in the 1920s or something. He, he figured out how to like basically morph faces by, by taking like negatives mm. and stacking them on top of one another. And he you made he, that Michael Jackson music video. And he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> <laughs> and so immediately after Rodney King happened, <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> he he was uh, so so he, his big idea was like, well, let's get criminals early. We'll profile criminals. What you do is you just take every mug shot, you layer them together, oh. and then what will happen is it will morph <laughs> the criminal into the perfect criminal, and then we'll know what to look for. Well, something that later was found out that we found out about that related to beauty is that beauty isn't something that you like. It's not like 
above average that you're like looking to attain it's a beauty is actually the absence of flaws and so uh -huh. and so if you if you morph together any <laughs> hundred faces of dudes or oh, females gosh. what you will have is a gorgeous person mm -hmm. and so oh my God. And so they posted these these pictures of like hey, keep an eye out for a male or a female that well, looks I'll like keep an eye out. Because, what? because they're in trouble, and everyone's like, "What the Wanted fuck?" Alive. <laughs> wow, I guess criminals are sexy. I knew I was into bad boys for something. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> This this uh this, this this fucking Galton asshole. He used to <laughs> Sir Francis. He used to go around with a goddamn ventilating hat. <laughs> <laughs> to keep his brain cool, it was hand I power, love it. and he'd be flapping his hat cool first all day off, with a little pump in his hand. No, yeah, uh, he'd be pumping, pumping, walk, off, walking around England, talking about who's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this is a perfect myth booster. Yeah, this is, this is easy Can't, easy. In fact, I'm sure there's hats with like fans and oh, stuff yeah. on them. Oh yeah, in Sky Mall the, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were gonna say Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Doubling down on the Scotland. Sky, Skymall just found this guy's old papers. That's how Skymall started. Like, actually. And also, these African women. <laughs> I mean, you gotta see it to believe it, baby. I'm talking. So there's this book I was reading. Uh, I got bored with it. <laughs> but it's called The Erotic Engine, and it's about how sexuality and, and pornography, like power technology and media yeah and uh sir francis galton reminded me of this one guy i don't remember his fucking name but they would go it was one of these first you know western english people went down to africa and they saw just the you know, the different body shapes and colors down there and they're like oh we gotta get you up here and show you around <laughs> right <laughs> so they didn't just like measure and use a protract they like Put black women in cages, Jesus and we're just like, check Christ. out these women. Well, what was the name for? It? Because that that spawned the name. There was one specific woman that was like yes. going on yes. tour there was and stuff. Very one specific woman. She had a, she did have a great big butt. Yeah. Um, there, that's have... that's really gonna change my next trip to the strip club. I, uh, do they do they let you out? Of here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blink twice if you need me to call. <laughs> call for help. Are you just on coke? Or... <laughs> yeah, just, I don't have my ventilating hat on. <laughs> Sorry. You're not from England, are you? Uh, oh, you should. We should. What was her? Uh, do you know the guy's name? I I would just was. No, I forget the name, but it came up in the um, the cargo cult episode. Ah uh, yes, I think it might have been that guy. And uh, no, it wasn't that guy. The, but wo was... the woman. Uh, 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 I think it. Yeah, we did talk about that so, in that episode. Yep. Yeah. So that's just like a lot of khakis in that. <laughs> the cargo cult. <laughs> yeah. episode. No. Oh, the cargo cult. I'm, they, they, I'm not familiar. I've heard that's, the name before. So that's where planes would land on these. You know, like during the the second the world second war. world war, and they would they, these remote they Pacific would, Islands. Yeah, you know, like very tribal, and they would find when they returned that a whole religion had sprung oh, up. Oh, like the gods must be crazy. The heavens, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so they'd make like little they'd make runways and planes and have, that wouldn't fly. They'd have coconut like headphones <laughs> and stuff, and they'd be like air like, traffic controlling, <laughs> like planes landing and shit. <laughs> like it's fucking crazy, yeah. man. It's like <laughs> Stargate. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there's uh, this interesting um, stuff of the kind of it, it's you can kind of teach a, a pigeon superstition in in a, in a way of in a manner of speaking anyway. So the the way that the reward mechanisms work is is that uh, at at first when you, something gets rewarded, there's this. Um, uh, uh, you get this spike of dopamine and then dopamine eventually works back and, and is the motivator. So when you're like, ooh, there's a reward coming, that's when dopamine sets up. But anyway, you, if you, 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 you pre-jack dopamine, you it, get a pre-drip. Well, no. The, so if you like teach a pigeon that, that, um, that 
you know, it does a task and then it gets a reward and you do a few tests like this. So you teach the pigeon that it lives in this universe mm -hmm. that the, where there's these predictable outcomes, you do a thing and then there's a predictable outcome. And that's, yeah. and this is how life works. You work hard. You, you earn a solid day. He read the stones. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, buy your bootstraps. But, uh, <laughs> but then what you do is one day you just throw in a reward randomly. That pigeon will just start doing whatever it was just last <laughs> doing like oh, if it nice. just happened oh, to be this, moving the wing, like, with, yeah. with the wing like yeah, that yeah. i was just doing that. yeah so, so that's like pigeons so, can't stop shitting so, yeah so that's what, the secret whatever whatever you're doing you're like picking your nose to get off and the, the plane comes in it's like oh, oh we were doing and now you're, you got the finger in the nose all of the time. Right. And, and you're becomes, getting off from right. it, of course. <laughs> Hazel <laughs> Reflex 101. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> Nasal <laughs> Reflex 101. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to like college. Uh, you, that'd be a fun move as a professor to be like, so I don't want to recap everything from high school, but just like, I, I know all of you already know this, but just, just for the couple of you that don't, just because just you're going to know the need to know this for the rest of the year. Right. Um, yeah. I recommend. So sexuality is controlled in the nostrils, and here's how yeah. it works. And if you wear a condom, we'll fuck that right up. I don't have to tell you guys that. <laughs> Science. Yeah. I like that it's excessive masturbation. Or wearing a condom. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> what? It's really trying hard to get women to have sex with you. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to jerk off doctor's orders. Yeah. I can't use a condom either, lady. Yeah. <laughs> really. Sorry. I'd love You're not to. gonna go to one of those vibrator uh, doctors, are you? <laughs> Quacks. I'm breathing <laughs> out my mouth. <laughs> I'm not wearing a condom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I even make it extra loud. She so she knows I'm breathing out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> and, I don't know, doctor. <laughs> and, I'm sorry. That's uh, just pheromone traffic. <laughs> <laughs> and still nothing. She's still not. Yeah. She's still not accepting. My, yeah. My mature. She'd still orgasm. rather run this dick strap to a bicycle wheel. <laughs> yeah. Can't you see Very all the immature. hairs in my nose <laughs> filtering out all the undesirable women? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly from England. You aren't, you aren't touching your clit, are you? Oh, <laughs> oh, how old are you? Oh, should have Good checked for your you. license. <laughs> you, you told me at the club you were, you were 21. Hey, I'm no pet But I just thought. Uh, <laughs> That's not a clue, is it? Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Skip. <laughs> Sorry, officer. She told me she was an adult. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Should we, reflex 101. Uh, can we, uh, can we show, can we, can we talk to Shane about impulse control? I would love it if we talked to Love talking about I'm gonna, impulse I'm gonna control. A, a drink. I okay. can't control can I, uh, myself. Can I get, grab one too? <laughs> yeah. And Shane, you need one? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. And we'll have, we'll have an aux cord. Yeah, we'll have an aux cord. We've got to talk to you about impulse control. I, I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, impulse control. Oh, prefrontal. no! Well, dude, well, I told you about the light. That's I told you not to move he, the light. He begged you. We all made sure before we were like, remember the light. It yeah. always We're like, the remember the light that only you set up. I guess. I'm going to forget. We really got to learn how to do that. Nasal reflex 101. <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. I got another dumb one, uh, but bes besides the uh, besides the impulse control, which is the most important. Yeah. Uh, but also, then we 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 should get into. We got to talk about Shane stuff. Oh, with this we got to talk, talk about the movie and what that was like. So much to do. I know. Yeah. I mean, listen, are you cool with that? You got time? I got all the time in the world. Oh hell yeah! Uh, real. I I. So what I know is with the the. Uh, the film, the documentary. Yeah, Psychonaut. Yeah, you did. Thank you for coming to my film. <laughs> I, it's my first film. <laughs> yeah, uh, we worked very hard on this film. I, is I, this guy. I, 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 I'm I, sorry, I, my, my ears might be going bad. Are you saying film? Are, are you, you that film? Egyptian guy from the history? They channel? said they said film in Ireland. They, they said we're going to see the go to the cinema see a film. A film. That's what they say. Are you it's fucking? A, with no, me? I'm dead serious. A film. Huh. Yeah, I lived in Ireland for three I've years. Been to Ireland. 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 I know. Ah. Yeah. 
Huh. Going to the cinema, see a film. Well, S- Scots are looking a lot better. In my book. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly sound better. So, so what I was going to ask you uh, about the um, about the film? Yeah, <laughs> was you did an excessive amount of psychedelics for how long? Yeah, well, it was a lot more than what we showed in the film because the the way that we ended up, we didn't know what we were like shooting and how it was all going to come together exactly. We just knew Thank we you, had man. all these like great interviews and. And then we were gonna like put in some of my stand up and kind of mix it. We we weren't we had a lot of different ideas about how we were going to break it into parts. If we I... eventually went with went just by drug, uh-huh. um, and so it was just like we'd show like mushrooms, uh, LSD, and DMT or whatever. So what we didn't show was like how many mushrooms I was actually doing, which oh. was like three times a week, uh, oh. really heavy doses for like um, yeah, because you you said the heroic dose months. is not heroic. No, I mean, I think Terrence McKenna, uh, who 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 um, coined it, the five grams heroic dose. Dry I mean, it depends the on the species. For for some species, that's that's way too much. But um, but for your average Wait, um, species, cubensas. What do you mean? Um, like a there, dog? There's a bunch of different yes, species of mushrooms. of uh, of psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> I thought you were talking about who's <laughs> taking it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many grams uh, 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 for a dog? <laughs> Fish, yeah, fish yeah. love it. And for the Scottish women, don't even give me uh, yeah. You gotta give them a whole fucking pound. I was like, uh, Jesus fucking Christ. The, like, the eugenics like, of psychedelia. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, I mean, Terrence McKenna was still in the age of like you. You did psychedelics a lot and just like went out and had adventures or like went to concerts and like you know that was still a lot of the. Co- it, it was before the whole like very serious like set and Eyes setting closed, and all of that. In a bed. And you can do way more mushrooms, <laughs> eyes closed, like uh, just going inwards as, really? as a meditative therapeutic aid. Absolutely. Do you? Do you? I, I mean, I, I, you know, there's always like a risk of like uh, saying that and and someone being stupid with things. But but <laughs> but there's also there's also actually a lot of people do themselves wrong by so in the in in both um, some. Um, psilocybin and MDMA trials, and this isn't to encourage people to do five grams because they're not using anything like that. But um, but they have they they used um, in the past placebo, full dose, and half dose for mm-hmm. like depression or PTSD or whatever. And they have since in many trials cut the half dose because the placebo do- because it's coming along with therapy was uh-huh. working. <clears throat> Was working because therapy works mm-hmm. for some, and then, and then the full dose was working like a miracle drug for for many people for the PTSD dose, and stuff. Yeah, wow. But the half dose was uh, was actually causing people issues sometimes, <sighs> and the idea is, is that's that fucking interesting. Un- unlike beer, where there's like this linear of like, okay, right. now I have five, and so I'm feeling pretty drunk now. If I have five more, I'm gonna be hammered or whatever. Um, it's, it's the, the half dose, you're like halfway into the trip or the subconscious and halfway still kind of here. That's the most uncomfortable part. And it's uncomfortable. It's unsettling and it's not as it, and it makes people just going up on the roller coaster forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) When I did a half a tab of acid, it was way less comfortable. You need like a critical mass. Yeah, uh, but don't, don't you also? Break, through, and, and so you don't want to do more than that breakthrough. And individual differences apply, and some people can go a very long ways on like a gram of mushrooms. But, but you were doing ten grams every couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not necessarily ten, but I was, uh, quite often. Yeah, I mean, I was doing some small doses too, um, and and everything was going great. I mean, the the reason why I did it was um, because we started filming this documentary. I didn't, and at the exact same time, I started having uh, some like career. Like it's, I always get depressed when I don't exactly know my path forward. Like when mm-hmm. I, it's 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 more that I have like five ideas that I haven't landed on. Mm-hmm. I I'd rather have landed on one like mediocre idea that I'm like going with mm-hmm. than having like five great ideas that I don't know what to select between. That's when I get like that's when I have like analysis paralysis and mm-hmm. and, and so so I got really kind of depressed at the beginning of the documentary. I wasn't sure what I was going to be and I had some other stuff going on too and then and so I was like well I uh, mushrooms have been so good for my depression in the past so I did like what my normal regimen would be which is do them like two or three times in a week and then usually I wouldn't need them again for another three to six to nine months Uh and then 
And then, but uh, it, it worked. It snapped me out of my depression. And then I was like, you know, I always use them for depression, but I wonder if they could just like make me feel good. Like I feel average right now. Maybe I could feel good. And then, it, you know, it did. I felt good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what if I could feel great? <laughs> <laughs> and, what if like, I could see I my own bones? Great. Right. <laughs> yeah, what is you? You're fucking, you're fucking with the boredom index uh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. You ever try picking your and nose? And it's just right. kind of like, what's after great? <laughs> right. And you don't want to know what's after great. And so, <laughs> and so oh. really after that, and then I like... <laughs> I, I you're just had peeling a, back the fabric of reality yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, had a, I had a really big ayahuasca. So I had, I had only had two previous ayahuasca... Um, Ceremonies and they were really, really, really mild. And I, I just thought it was because <laughs> That's so crazy to hear. Well, I had smoked a lot of DMT before that. And yeah. DMT is an exceptionally intense experience. And so yeah. I was I, I was like, well, the reason why everyone else is having these profound experiences mm-hmm. is just because like to them it's intense, yeah, right. but like I'm smoking DMT, so my yeah. my bar is just raised. A lot. That's what I thought. And what it actually was was I just wasn't having quite a big enough dose. So I I, I did a, I did a very large dose of ayahuasca, and I had it was the best trip of my life. But I kind of uh, that launched into a manic episode, and then I wasn't really? sleeping for a while. Holy and shit! I was like very excited. So that was the best trip of your life. Time travel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 thinking too much about time travel. Uh, yeah. There's no such thing <laughs> about thinking too much about time travel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we need to unpack a little bit. But 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 but, 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 but uh, uh, <laughs> I, there was like no time travel talk. Rules in the household implemented. There was like, <laughs> there, there was like time travel, like uh, in a, like a TV show or a movie or Uh-oh. anything. We had to turn it off. Zip it, was like buddy. Very Such triggering. rules do not exist here, my uh, friend. Yeah, I can tell yeah. you that it is a time travel uh, rule free zone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I, I think uh, you 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 talked about that a lot with uh, Tia Vaughn with uh, uh, yeah, yeah with yeah, being yeah. Uh, uh, oh, God, that was... convinced that the. The DMT trip would convince you of the next place you were going to be taking yeah, DMT yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which was fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so then I was like, "How's it would that show, happening?" The DMT DMT would trip you. would show him the next. It give, it's a like that. one that was going to be, and then so I would come out of the next DMT. So, so that was a I, wonderful I, I conversation. Would, I would, yeah. Oh, and Theo was so fucking funny in that too. <laughs> I, I, but uh, yeah, so I so toward the end of when I started doing DMT and this is when it got too creepy for me I would I would be showing like some like symbol or something some code sort of thing that didn't really mean anything to me and maybe it wasn't really anything notable it wasn't even that crazy compared to all of the rest of the stuff in the it only DMT had three trip. dimensions to it <laughs> but it was it, it was like it was like really impressed upon me like you need to remember this and it was always so confusing why and then the next time I'd smoke DMT like when I'd come out and I'd still have like a little bit bit of dmt vision uh-huh. i would just see that like a thing in the room like uh like like say this this hub um thing that you have like i've never seen anything like that uh-huh. before like say i smoked dmt right now i come out and i see that in with like some dmt vision and i'd realized that was what it was uh, showing me yeah well that the, you like, sit on that in curious hysteria <laughs> yeah. so you get like you would like give you give yourself deja vu in a way, like, in a that's way. what it was talking about. Oh. Yeah, because, well, I kept on, like, taunting DMT to, like, give me, <laughs> g- g- b- because I was, like, uh, and I still am convinced that DMT is just a gateway into your own mind, and most people most people believe it's outside of your mind. Most people that have had a DMT experience think that they're yeah, seeing a different dimension sure. or gods or You, you or got into some and, uh, really, really fascinating ideas with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Wait, but I, I just want to say that sounds, that those moments with the DMT, that sounds like the pigeon superstition moment. Yeah, and so you know, ah. yeah, that's what I kind of intellectually tell myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, but unless you're but it was it was sort of it was in the moment. It would feel real enough where I was like. Uh, that that's when I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I don't think I should be messing around with those <laughs> worlds Looking anymore. Into the code. <laughs> like I was, I was basically asking these kind of worlds or perceptions to like prove that they were outside of my head. And, right. Yeah. And then it started doing that, and then I was like, <laughs> right. Well, I take it back. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think, I just think before we get really carried away with this yeah. kind of stuff, that there yeah, is, yeah. Uh, uh, if you're not familiar with DMT, and I haven't done it. But there is the the guides that are kind of there on a DMT trip that yeah. are are they have personalities and stuff. 
uh, yeah, I would say uh, ayahuasca. I mean, I've never sm- done ayahuasca, but I smoked DMT. Mm-hmm. And you're probably the person to explain it. But mm-hmm. I want, I do want to say it like, seems like it's a specific personality that's actually showing you stuff. And it depends on the trip. Sometimes my, yeah. it's just like my geometry. friend Joe Dosh said. Joe Dosh, funny, very funny uh, comedian. Uh, hopefully not misgendering. I think because he just transitioned. Oh, she just transitioned. Did not know that. Uh, uh, but Joe at the time said that the feeling that he got, and this is the feeling that I got. Was the most benign condescension. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Just like here you go, dummy. Uh, Want to see this yeah. brilliant it's pretty, thing? I bet you think this is really cool. Think you, you think you've seen it all? Well, yeah. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got. But a lot it's of okay. That. Yeah, you don't know any better. And also, I live here, and I'm bored, <laughs> and I just farted. Yeah. You think this is cool because you suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to me, you're cool because yeah. you're so simple. Because you're a visitor. Yeah, so primitive. So they they have a lot of that attitude yeah. in uh, there. But, but, they're like, what are you? Uh, well. I'm everything. I'm like, nah, yeah. I think you're just in your head. And like, well, whatever. I'm everything. I don't care if you believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, it sounds very calming in its own way. It sounds like it's a, it's a it's yeah. a it's a presence that's kind of soothing. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, go into your first DMT experience expecting a, a soothing, relaxing. No, 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 no. The, I, but, the experience but, 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 is, is yeah, crazy, the, but the, the guide is a bit some, of a. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes there's like what they call tricksters in there too, and there's like yeah, there's a lot of odd stuff going on. Yeah, there's. Like, you talked about that guy showing the, you like the uh, crazy cat face or whatever. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like Sturgill Simpson oh, uh, mm-hmm. has that song about uh, sure. uh, the, the elves. Uh, it was just so crazy to have like a country music. I think he's on Jimmy Kimmel singing that song. He's he did, he did on the SNL. DMT. And and it's uh, there's a lyric in it. It, it starts off Psilocybin with like psilocybin mescaline uh, DMT too. Uh, there there's I mean it starts off with like I've seen Jesus do 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 and like it, it sounds like a regular old Jesus song yeah. or something. <laughs> and then he goes and then and then, <laughs> then in the next verse he just goes there is a gateway in your mind. That that leads somewhere out there, way beyond this plane. Yeah. yeah. Where reptile aliens made of light Whoa. cut you open and pull out all your pain. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I was like, well, that t- song sure took a turn. <laughs> a song yeah. written by David Icke. <laughs> I, I mean, you think that's one of those songs that you do in a bar, like no one knows who you are. You're you're trying to do these nice little messages and no one's listening to you. And like, mm-hmm. I bet I could just say anything yeah. up here. And no <laughs> right, totally. People are going right like, on. I heard that. <laughs> I bet that you losers like, think I'm smoking cigarettes up here. <laughs> you're just like having dinner, you know, you just go into the bar. There happens to be music playing in the corner. You're half paying attention. You're like... Hey, Honey, like did you me? just? Yeah. <laughs> did you just hear him <laughs> talk about? <laughs> uh, lizards uh, remove lizards. the pain <laughs> because mostly the lizards are blamed for inflicting it all. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. with their shape shifting ability? Well, yeah. 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 Uh, running what, banks. What with yeah. their Illuminati uh, <laughs> running a red? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so like... I lost my mind for a bit, and it took a while to come back. So that's kind of what I wanted to ask you was, um, have you have you met? In in all, all your years, because I I did psychedelics when I was like fifteen for the first time, and like, you know, we were like going at it pretty hard, mm-hmm. and you know, after I left, one of the dudes became like total acid casualty, mm-hmm. and I mean, were you ever afraid of becoming one of those guys that's like, hey, it's so good to see you? You ever meet one of those guys? I don't <laughs> fuck with acid much because of that. Ah. Uh, uh, because I, when I do meet someone who's off, the story's almost always LSD. Yeah, and it, man. And it's almost always that they did two things very wrong. One, they went on a real like LSD exploratory, like what I was doing with mushroom, uh, of doing it like a you know lot. three times a week <clears throat> or something like that. A lot, and you know, it, these are experiences that. Like an average person should be having like three times a year, yeah. um, and and so they're doing that. You know, they have like this wild summer, and then they're also upping their dose. And then someone's like, "Well, I I took what I thought was like fifteen hits, which is already right. you shouldn't do that. Yeah. But it was actually a hundred hits. <laughs> <laughs> the guy I misspaced. Yeah, that's a true story that happened recently. Is a woman. The comma was moved. The co- uh, so, yeah, her chemist moved the decimal place, and she snorted powdered acid. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, she she was fucked up for like a day. First 12 hours were very scary. Mm-hmm. The second 12 were less scary. And then she came out uh, more or less okay. But that's the thing about these illicit substances yeah. is that yeah. you got a guy in a nuclear silo making it all for 20 years. Well, there's a lot daylight. of problems with it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, that's where most of the world's acid came from for years. A guy really? in a nuclear silo. Yeah, really? yeah. That guy's like, with uh, the launch code. He's like <laughs> 70 something and in jail right now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, still, still writing. He's and like, squatter's right. Man. <laughs> no way. Seriously. Yeah. 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 He, he's, uh, uh, yeah. I just heard about him recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, part of the, Part of what makes the way things are regulated so dangerous is that people don't have good resources, and they're not—they're possibly not getting the right thing. Yeah. Uh, and you may then, think you've done acid when really you've done two CB or something uh, like that. And uh, and then you know, and people are not uh, learning how to do these things by themselves. I mean, I get instagram and like facebook messages every day i can't even respond to them and i i don't like feel right about responding or giving people oh, advice oh yeah on pharmacology like shit but that's i mean that's how ridiculous <laughs> like the pic- system is Im- imagine any face. other drug <laughs> how much should i take <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> hey man you haven't tried mixing dmt and it's, battery it's like acid. all of the time hey do you think dmt <laughs> would be good for me if i'm bipolar and stuff like that oh and, yeah that's a whole fucking and, and and but but i mean it's just pathetic that we live in a world where uh, because there there are no other medicines and i do consider psychedelics to uh, to have have a lot of medical a, value for sure um uh, but there's no other medicine where like at the end of the commercial well if if complications persist consult a comedian <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, that's how fucking ridiculous the world that we it's live in it's got a clown is. face on it and, i mean i don't know uh, i don't know who to talk to i mean it's, <laughs> it's so fucking stupid and that and that's all these laws do is yeah. just make things more dangerous right. it, it doesn't it's doing nothing for our public yeah health. which is one of the safest thing to do is the nat like you know mushrooms because it there's no chemist involved yeah. presumably right yeah, yeah i mean even even that i, I mean I, I i look forward to uh, even if they took them from a schedule one to a schedule two that would open up the doors for science and and for ther- sure and therapeutic use and eh, that's the world I, i'd like to see doing them professionally yeah because people can go to like ketamine clinics and stuff now Dude, that, you're in LA. that is mind-blowing yeah i mean the idea to me <laughs> If you told me, like, in eighth grade, when everybody was, like, doing rave drugs, that ketamine would be a fucking depression thing, ecstasy would be, you know, yeah. treating PTSD, and mushrooms, ayahuasca, like, yeah. there, there is not an illegal drug I know of that doesn't treat some fucking thing. Yeah. And that sounds impossible. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way, you know, things were colored when we were growing up, you're like, this is just yeah, yeah. Party fucking bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and perception, I mean, if, if some... You know, if someone gives you a lot of ideas about uh, th- these are kind of um, these are these drugs make you fairly suggestible sometimes. Yeah. And then they also um, they're um, they're kind of these non-specific amplifiers in a way where where it's it's a little uh, there's not a very predictable response but a, a lot of times consciousness is using whatever information that it has to fill in the gaps so if you've only heard one story about what a psychedelic is yeah. you're probably going to have a trip that is right. uh, you know yeah, that, uh, oh, the, yeah. that's what McKenna that, said that the first person to... to do a pure acid trip was Albert Hoffman yeah. because yeah. he had yeah. never been suggested before getting never given any sort of you know sure. setting that he was the only person ever really had yeah. the first true unadulterated. He wasn't told what he was going to experience. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, when when I was a teenager doing these things, I didn't know anything about like setting, set and setting, or yeah. having intention or integration or anything like that. Yeah. And I was hanging around with a bunch of scumbags, so I had yeah, like yeah. straight up half bad trips. <laughs> like, yeah, straight yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Straight up, like just like other kids that wanted to do drugs most of the time sucked. Yeah. But I was just like about checking it out, and yeah. I was like, "Good for you, man." This I shit waited. Sucks. I waited and did some dumb things as an adult, so I had a nice, uh, real deep hatred for myself on the bad trips. Uh. But I did at least like kind of wait 
and not do it with fucktards. Yeah, I uh, I think I found later, I mean, and I don't know what, what you think about this, but a lot of like those kind of like pioneers of psychedelics, mm-hmm. later in life, I mean, obviously they're getting old and shit too, that makes sense, but they kind of get more into the microdose aspect mm-hmm. of, of psychedelics, and I, I'm curious to see what you think about about that because you're like a high dosage kind of guy. Yeah, I've never had much luck with microdose. And, and I, I mean, I think that... Um, I, I'm pro neuroplasticity, which is, which psychedelics kind of opens up some new connections, and so that's that can help with some setting some new good habits, breaking some old bad ones. So I can see that the little bit of microdosing that I've done, which I, which I haven't really done it properly, uh, I, I felt like, and the reason why I didn't really continue doing it was because it felt like I tried it for depression mm-hmm. and it felt like it made it worse. Really? And so it had like the half dose effect for you, yeah, you think? And I also don't really like, I don't like a chemical change in the brain. Psychedelic, what I like about psychedelics is the experiential change. Yeah. From it. Yeah. You need ke- uh, the, the chemicals to get you there. Right. Sure. Um, but, but then you're having the experience it's in, and it's the experience that's the long lasting effect. Yeah. Rather than saying taking, what do you, I, I, I don't, I take any pill. Microdosing is a pill, pharmaceutical conspiracy <laughs> to keep you addicted to <laughs> these drugs. Yeah. Taking any pill every day is like, eh, careful what it is. You yeah, know, maybe right. some, uh, you know, heart uh, medication or my, something my like that. Sure, but after but, but doing it for your brain, is I, uh, I get the the lasting experience for me is is besides whatever happened on the trip is the um, immediately following the ego reduction stuff where I'm kind of like, oh man, I should really forgive that person for that shit that happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like I'll call them and like okay, yeah. uh, apologize or whatever. You know, I mean, do you ever have that like a heavy fucking like yeah. e- ego death hangover kind of thing? Yeah, like, all the time. Yeah, and you definitely want to wait till after you're done <laughs> tripping to make those calls for sure. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, it, hey, me, I, it's you from the future. <laughs> I, uh, you got to see this picture, man. I um, there's this there's a legal psilocybin um retreat center in Jamaica called Myco Meditations hmm. and I once a year go down there and like I'm like a guest facilitator and Sweet. help uh, just so like my fans can come and eat mushrooms with me basically that's crazy and, uh, that's yeah. amazing and then, uh, and then, then I wander have... over to hedonism too <laughs> <laughs> what's up yeah, it's, all it's, is forgiven it's great because it's like <laughs> it's it's, it's it's like rural um, and, and Jamaica, and it's you, you go so far away from the touristy stuff because everything is like everything in Jamaica is like spring breaky. Yeah. Like like this dude's like you, you go to the bar and everyone's in a pool, and then there's just like a guy like jumping off of a cliff like wow. once an hour on the hour. With, <laughs> Like used to be horses like into a pool. Yeah, yeah. Would, like that's a real thing that it, and, then, and, then, and then it'd be like, yeah, he jumped off the cliff, and which that guy's job must be fucking crazy. And speaking of boredom, you, you know, get you get bored, like you get yeah, home for work. Like, Actually, the the, huh? the the jump kills you. It's a new guy. Every time. <laughs> yeah. He's filling it up. Yeah, it's like the prestige or something like that. Uh, 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 prestige to uh, uh, make <laughs> uh, I, I, I like to think that it's boring after a while yeah, with the clip yeah. you oh, get yeah, home yeah. and your wife's like how was your day like how's my day <laughs> I like jumped I'm here. I get I, cliff eight <laughs> times and came home. I get like five I bucks to jump. <laughs> How's my day? Do you think like the last one? You he's know just reading... how my day was. That's how I met you. <laughs> the, the last one. He's just reading a book on the way down. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just it's just uh, you know the it. There's a lot of that vibe in yeah. the common, and this is so far away from like mm-hmm. all of the common stuff, and it's like rural Jamaica, and it's it's paradise it's beautiful but anyway the reason i bring it up is because you know a lot of people that come there are are coming there that you know they've done a bunch of like antidepressant things and therapy for years and nothing's worked and they're kind of like desperate and they've seen all these good things come out about psilocybin but the trials it's too hard to get in or it's not in their area or whatever and and also tripping on the beach uh yeah, with getting, people that know what Jamaica. they're doing is like is Probably better than being in like a a lab or, or right, yeah, yeah. Just seeing some nature might, but do some good. 
people, and I always uh, I try to tell people, but then it's hard to tell people too because then the, in that experience, anything that you tell them, they might perceive as like, uh, if they get paranoid, then they're like, oh, he said that because I actually should call people. But like, my one, like, I'm pretty chill and I'm not in charge <laughs> of the thing, but the one thing that I'm, I, I'm just like, guys, like, just stay off your fucking phones yes. yeah. yeah when you're tripping just like you use your phones all of the time just give yourself a phone break yeah please don't no mirrors, make fucking no calls phones. please don't move money around <laughs> in an account because you had fucking some great idea so like, you, like, no. like i'm uh, like that's basically <laughs> our job here is just to make sure you don't do some stupid oh shit like God. that but we're also something. all adults yeah. so it's like you can't like lock away their phones either sure and so some people will still get on there and they gotta be over and be like hey buddy how's it going uh -huh. who are you talking to right now Man, can, you that well? can you handle that well can you handle talking to tripping people pretty well uh, uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah? Yeah. That, yeah, would, yeah, that would even freak me out. I'd be like, I got my own problems, dude. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I've been, I've been tr early on. As soon as I discovered mushrooms, I was like, this is this is the best up. thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, and I would find as many mushrooms as I could, um, and I would get as many people together as I could, and then I would just have, like, trip re retreats and I'd just have, like, days in parks and stuff and get, like, 20 of us together. And I was also uh, always kind of, like, the go-to guy. Not that I... That doesn't necessarily... That doesn't make me fucking qualified or anything. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not saying it was a responsible thing to do. It's just something that I gained a lot of experience doing sure. over the years. Yeah. And I just because I trip more than most people, people just feel more comfortable, like, yeah. listening to what I have to say about it. Well, it is... Uh, <laughs> It is a qualifier. Yeah. Uh, it is what I would listen to. You know what I mean? If I was a, you know. Um, I mean, I do know some psychedelic therapists out there that have like either never tripped or only tripped a few times. Yeah. And it's like, how could he even. <laughs> like when you're tripping, it's so awkward talking to someone who isn't tripping. You have because no. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, can't you can't get it. Right now. <laughs> but, do you but, understand <laughs> not words? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Some dude told me I was speaking in hieroglyphics. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were we took, we took mushrooms at a bachelor party, and I said something to some dude, and he's like, oh, yeah, John's talking about hieroglyphics over there. Like, you lost your shit. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. And you did it, start speaking it about is, it. It's funny because this retreat has, like, something for everybody. They have, like, a therapist there, and they have a nurse there and everything. And the main thing is if you just make people feel safe and comfortable, they're their own. Oh, you, that's great. You, you know, and then you just back off from there and get someone in water if they need it or if they yeah. need to talk to someone you talk to. To them, but other other than that, you just give people their space. But um, but what's what's interesting is that you know there's always someone that's like a little mystical, and there's always someone that like you know when I'm there, I'm kind of the skeptic. Uh, dick about it all and like this is what your brain's doing right now and this is why you're feeling this perception and uh, and and so there's all these different but the the guy that runs it he's mostly he's just like obsessed with mushrooms he's like a, he's a mycologist and um, and just loves all mushrooms whether they're psychedelic or not and <laughs> wow. um, and I mean mycology is fascinating but um, but he and he believes in in you know the healing power of mushrooms as yeah. do I and he's a really cool guy and everything but he also can like be a little out there i remember one of the times i was there um i had like one of my podcast listeners um came and he's a young guy and he was like um and he had tripped before and everything and he had this pretty like big trip and he's like he comes up to me and the guy that runs it, he's like he's like it's like there's a it's kind of like there's um like we're all on a bus being driven by an alien and the guy running the retreat is like this kid gets it <laughs> Can anybody see in the back? Because <laughs> I can't see shit. <laughs> Nothing is reptile, man. <laughs> I 
lid. So, so, yeah, so, so much you know, light gets through. You, you get into this uh, world of psychedelics, and there, are, uh, yeah. there, there is no short of, of eccentric characters uh, in for the sure. world of, of psychedelics. That, that is funny, though, because uh, I, I, I think it's so funny how much you've done uh, in, in that realm, <laughs> and you're still, like, uh, pretty skeptical, uh, I would say, yeah. pragmatic approach type person mm-hmm. to it. Um, and I'm interested, especially in when you when you're talking about like uh, the the areas where you go like I don't want to know more or I don't I don't want to dabble in that anymore. Yeah, because yeah. do you think it's leading to craziness or do you think? I mean, you talked about like it was the first time you ever thought about, about like uh, afterlife stuff. Uh, yeah. And you were like an atheist, and you were being like, "I don't want to live forever." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, that, like that was really, really, really fascinating shit to me because it would seem like you would only keep going down that road to most people want to meet God. I have yeah. no interest. I hear he's booked. He's driving a bus. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's like a big before. driving force with a, you know a lot of these a lot of these uh, you know some people review uh, think of them as medicines. Some people think of them as like these fun experiences. Some people think of them as like a spiritual journey. Yeah. And a lot of people are on a spiritual quest to like uh, you know connect with the divine and whatnot and that's definitely not me in fact um i so dmt which is a a a, a very intense experience there's also this 5 meo dmt oh um that's with, the toad yeah uh, and, oh and you ever it, hear tyson talk on rogan about seeing the toad i haven't but i heard <laughs> uh, uh, other than i know that he's done it and, and people have talked about it but <laughs> but the but uh, and and yeah i guess it's, it's hey, it Joe, made some waves that's exactly <laughs> right <laughs> they, <laughs> they squirt the toad on the mirror and they, they scrape it off and they that's exactly right joe yeah, yeah. yeah. it's amazing it's yeah, amazing it's, it's uh, one of the best I, interviews I, you can ever watch i do need to watch that <laughs> but uh, i have uh so when i was doing my tour and one it's a misunderstanding because because it's actually two very different experiences i guess they're both equally like very intense but the 5-MAO DMT, it's like a completely different molecule and chemical. It's acting on different parts of the brain. And the experience is much more of like a emotional experience rather than like the laser light show of a regular um, an NDMT. Oh, very um, interesting. And, and so, um, and so people, but people come up to me um, after, uh, if I do a psychedelic show, um, which I still uh, do sometimes, uh, they'll come up to me and they'll be like, have you done 5-MAO DMT? And I was like, I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Just, just regular old DMT. <laughs> yeah. old and, and they're like, oh, well, it's like the next level. And I'm like, <sighs> I don't, as far as I can tell, there's an infinite number of levels yeah, in the DMT yeah. space. Like I've I've had yeah. over a hundred breakthroughs, and um, and it's I've had some reoccurring worlds here and there, but huh. but it can also be like a completely different experience every single time. And but but the five MAO, so people call the the regular DMT the spirit molecule because you see these spirits or you've been saying guides, you know, and uh, and you can't blame them for thinking that most people believe in a god that doesn't exist so i I don't know how that's somehow less crazy but (laughs) but but with the five mao dmt people are like people are like it is like a direct connection to god it is like a direct connection to the source and it's undeniable and i'm like Oh, not interested. <laughs> Definitely no, not, yeah. not interested. No, thank you. Don't right. want to. Like, I'm only interested in doing it if I'm like, all right, I want to see what the fuss is about, and then I'm going to come up sure. with some argument right. about how it's not actually. So do you think the main reason you're doing it is just to uh, just maintain? <laughs> like, mm, just depends to... on the depends on the substance. For DMT, it's mostly just exploration. Right. Yeah. And I come up with... For me, I come up with a lot of ideas of what I think is going on in our ooh, subconscious, ooh, 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 ooh. and we'll then <laughs> and then uh, yeah, and then with with mushrooms is more more like therapy. Yeah, um, I've it's been definitely a, with an ketamine ordeal. a lot more lately, and which one? Ketamine. Yeah, and um, you know, some people wouldn't call it a psychedelic. It's fucking trippy though. It and sounds like it's, it's like very molecular and, relation. 
It's a, it's a little bit like DMT ish. I hear it go, like way. it's going into an empty room. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've never. Yeah, it can be. I've never fucked with with ketamine. I haven't either. It's it's pretty bananas. <laughs> like you start making some very bizarre associations. Really? I like it. I think it's the easiest psychedelic that there is. And are you talking it's like, IV or orally? Uh, well, I've done intramuscularly. Oh, okay. But but um but yeah, I've also tooted up the old snoot. <laughs> Sex in an empty room. <laughs> what, 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 I, what I like about ketamine the most is all of the immediate coming that happens <laughs> everywhere. Um, I, um, so hey, men get squirt too. Uh, I, oh, just pee. <laughs> um, it's only like ninety nine percent here, and, and um, that's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, but. Um, I had, uh, yeah, it, it's very bizarre, and it seems like it's very different for everybody. Yeah. For me, it can often feel like I'm in, like, a simulation or something, uh-huh. and it can seem like, if I did ketamine right now, I'd be like, there's nothing outside <laughs> of this. I'm in a room, and all of reality is, like, some hologram. Right. Plato's and cave. Like, it's all. <laughs> yeah. It's all just like metaphors for things. The mimes have been trying to warn me about this the whole time. But uh, yeah. we're just stuck in this box, but they just can't talk. And, it's like a David and, Lynch film. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and they're just projections of my subconscious anyway, so I'm just trying to talk to myself. And I've like, you know, I, I've done ketamine and uh, with the person I've been like, wait, am I that person? Are they me? Am, uh, I, are we like really, uh, really a hard time even telling oh, like there's wow. uh, the barrier kind boundary of, dissolving. Yeah, the boundary dissolves a bit. You can't really tell do you like the that, difference that... between it's like, Oh, I guess I'm everything or I'm do you, not. Do you like that feeling from psychedelics that we are all one n- type feeling? Not, n- no, usually, <laughs> <laughs> usually it leads to a lot of paranoia. Really? Um, but but with ketamine, it's like, also damn, I a shot tranquilizer. Kennedy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And I was Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a mind <laughs> Billy Joel's full of bullshit. No, I, I have. Uh, I've, I've been to a place on psychedelics where I've had that experience yeah. of like, oh, well, there is no escape from this. This does not end. Yes. Even if I wanted to kill myself, I would just. There's nothing I can do. I would if I jump off a building, uh, then I'll just end up realizing that my consciousness has also al- actually <laughs> become one with the water in the fucking sidewalk the whole time, just waiting for me to smash my own head into it. Is that why you don't want to meet God? Is because sidewalk. you might be him. I think. I, 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 I don't want to meet God because it's looking uh, in the mirror. I think in the world of psychedelics, a you're a that. very reassuring voice because you're one of the ones going. The fear does not leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fucking madness. But, but and, and it can be. And and, and also, uh, I would say that most people, uh, if they have their first psychedelic experience, having like heard this conversation or having watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas or something, psychedelics are usually nothing like that. Yeah, They're usually yeah. a pretty fucking chill, like heart opening, like a mind expanding experience. Yeah. It's a lot. Most of the psychedelic takeaways are already shit that's like embroidered on your grandma's decorative pillows. Like, oh, oh, I get it. Home is where the heart is. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I'm She's still up in the rock. Yeah. 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 Uh, the rock. No, grandma's a fraud. Oh, yeah. I think. I think that's. I think that's. That's uh, very true. And I think it, it is. Definitely, I would say because of my bad trip experience, it is uh, surround yourself in a good uh, yeah, environment, yeah. and Absolutely. you will have a wonderful trip. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the time. That's what's so nice about ketamine, though, is you're tranquilized, so you can you can go through this like otherwise might be like like just trying to put it into words a seemingly you know terrifying experience but you can't be nervous if you want to like you cannot feel fear or nervousness it's just like if someone like tranquilized you and then like pushed you off of a bridge like bungee jumping or something Whoa. like that and you just like couldn't move your muscles or like react emotionally <laughs> I guess, I guess to it I guess this is what's happening to me just, like, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm it. just like bouncing <laughs> 
<laughs> Feels like the first time ever. <laughs> so I wonder how. It's on so much ketamine. <laughs> DMT is one of like the most widely uh, prevalent biochemicals. Yeah, you know, right. It's in plants. It's in animals. It's everywhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that there is a reason for that in terms of the consciousness of all living things? No, really. I, I mean, I think that um, I, I think that lots of chemicals get co-opted for different things. E- even something like uh, if you say like serotonin or like testosterone or something like, hey, we know what this uh, serotonin's the feel good stuff. Testosterone's like the more right. aggressive stuff. And it's like, eh, actually, depends on what part of the brain it's acting on. Right. It uh, contacts is everything. And these, it, you know, there's just only so many chemicals. There's only so many neurotransmitters. And mixing them together in various ways leads to all of these different outcomes. I think it was just stumbled upon by accident. Yeah. There is... um. Um, yeah, the, it's a simple. It's a simple structure. Yeah, yeah, and and they so um, the uh, anthropologist that that is often on head talks with me. Um, uh, the anthropologist of Peru wrote a book called When Plants Dream, and then in Peru they do ayahuasca. It's some serious shit. I mean, it's ceremony. This isn't something like for any listeners that think like uh, just talk about psychedelics because they're a wee fun party drug. This is not. Anything you do for shits and giggle. I mean, maybe shits, but it, it's it's like, you know, it's like you said, an ordeal. Yeah. Like, And they actually call them ordeal medicines. This is yeah. like what the Shipibo people. No, I mean, even with studied. a mushroom, it is a poisonous and, effect. You're going, your body is going through some stuff. But I mean, they're also, they're also fasting for, for like dry fasting, yeah. no food, no water mm-hmm. for like 23 hours at a time. And then doing, and, and this is, how, you, know, you know, it's like, how did, the, how did anyone think to ever eat anything? <laughs> You know, the idea is, is like maybe you just eat a bunch of something and then if that guy dies, you don't eat that. And then if it, if they don't die, then I guess it's good. But what what um, what she thinks that they're actually doing is, is you fast, you kind of like clean out your system and then you have like the tiniest little bit of a new plant yeah. to to see what it uh, to see what it feels like. Ah. And and that's how we kind of stumbled across all of these things. And ayahuasca in particular, people are like, how do they figure out how to mix this with this thing? These two different plants, how do they figure out how to... Well, one of the plants definitely um, can make you really nauseous. And they... Um, uh, they they eat a lot of raw meat there, and so they carry a lot more parasites. Ah. and and um and so purging yeah. is a is a way that sure. maybe our ancestors stumbled upon mm-hmm. to to help clear out some of the parasites. Yeah, and uh, and like turned it into a ceremonial thing that mm-hmm. they that they stumbled on, and, and then and then in mixing the theory is in in maybe mixing like different ways yeah. of basically throwing up better yeah. one day you have just you guys made your to brain throw up yes. psychoactive <laughs> thing that's like holy shit all right i guess this the is the real parasites in your mind man <laughs> parasite in theaters now <laughs> so, yeah see it in imax <laughs> so i oh, no, see it on ayahuasca fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah i i mean i i don't think that uh dmt is like making grass trip or no, anything no, like that I, but no I but, just wondered, it, I don't know. It was, that, it was is, more of about being like the uh, the 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 life drug or yeah, something, yeah. you know. And, and people say that it's uh, what's it doing in the brain? They don't know for sure that it's in. Uh, yeah, in they the, say also the do the same, same thing about cannabinoids and humans and cannabis and there's a lot of that stuff. You yeah. know, they we all that. have a common ancestor. <laughs> yeah, at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Jesus. So they think <laughs> it's all Jesus. Uh, it's Christ. actually Adam and Eve. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry to fire. Him. Jesus is in the corner. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty uh, sure it's Adam and Steve on this show. <laughs> and Steve. And Steve. <laughs> and Wiggs. Um, 
But yeah, I, I mean, the, the even the idea that like, oh, DMT is like what gets released in your brain. That's what's responsible for dreaming or that's what gets released in high volumes right before you die. And that's sure. why people are lucky enough to be revived. That's why they, they have these DMT like stories. We're going through the like, tunnel, tunnel, all that shit. Vision, kingdoms, blah, blah, blah. Um, that isn't proven that that's what's going on. Mm. That's, Very that's hard to just test. a theory, and it's really one dude's theory that's became popular. I kind of believe it myself, right? But, it, but it's but it's definitely not. I think that is. Uh, I think that's proven. a great approach to have. Is just because to be like, well. Because my sister got drowned doesn't mean I hate gravity. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you can have these things that you want to be true. It doesn't mean they're true. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that stuff takes over, you know, like, like, like we, you know, I work in, like, weed culture. And people will just say things as if they're facts. And you want to go, like, what the fuck are you Man, talking? come yeah. on. Like, even if I wanted that to be true, it doesn't mean it's true. Like, just... Calm down. And you're shitting in the punch bowl, too. Yeah, And, and yeah. Psychedelics, for a very long time, has had a lot of shit in the punch bowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a lot of people talking out of school about it. And, yeah. And in the past, like, five years or so, the good people like yourself, good people at MAPS, and... Um, the great people at Google. It's number one. The great people at <laughs> Amp. The great works with MPL. I know, I know when I'm driving, I'm like, what are they tripping? These are, this isn't how I would get did you, there. Did you send me the thing? Huh? Did you send me the thing? Uh, what but, thing? Yeah, the, it's, it's, it's you. the multidisciplinary now. association no. of psychedelic studies, yeah. aka MAPS. Yes. Yeah. They're the um, ones doing all the the research. You know Tons of it. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 one of the big people leading the way. Yeah. And he'll get uh, a Nobel Prize, right? Like Doblin? No, no way. <laughs> Do Doblin is, uh, he's he's coming in town. I'm going to see him uh, this hey. week. Um, but he, he's he's great. And he and he's just a dude that was like, he was a therapist. MDMA was originally a uh, relationship counseling mm -hmm. drug. Mm -hmm. he, <laughs> no way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Wow. And, and it was incredibly successful. Yeah, like I bet. LSD was incredibly successful th for therapy. I mean, it was early on used for that. It wasn't until it was like co-opted by the military. Well, yeah, wasn't uh, Cary Grant the big guy? Yeah, yeah we did mm -hmm. a show. We did a partial episode about the original Doc Captain Trips. Yeah, and uh, Cary Grant was like man, mad mad uh -huh. into it, dude. But uh, yeah, and then and then Doblin had his uh, uh, you know once it became illegal, it became his like life's mission to like he just wants to get back into therapy. doing MDMA <laughs> therapy again and instead has had to make himself like this this voice um, but it, he's had uh, uh, here's the fucking craziest I, I mean I have had enough like universal consciousness -ish, ish experiences where I'm like I can't say I know for certain that there's not something fucking going on because I've had I've had some strange experiences that I can't really explain in a, in a, a scientific way that that doesn't feel like me grasping at more straws than just sure. like it's some other dimension or something that we we don't quite understand yet um but and you know there's just these crazy weird like odd serendipitous coincidences that kind of, like the invention of LSD itself but Doblin has one which is he was writing so he's like testified in front of congress and stuff like that and back in the day he was writing um this whole thing about how he, uh, you know, he's like writing out the speech and like he's closing it with, um, you know, so I just want you to help my uh, um, becoming, uh, being able to help people by being a psychedelic therapist. Uh, become more than a dream or whatever and then he and he goes and and he hits print and something goes wrong with his printer and it just prints out become more than a dream oh my God. And, he, and then he's like what's wrong with my printer and so he goes into his printer and he's like fussing around with it and pulls out the cartridge and somehow a tab of acid had gotten no in the fucking, fucking oh my God. printer 
shirt. And that's why all the other letters didn't print out. But then it must have like fell out or whatever and printed that last little oh, thing. Dude, that is fucking nuts. His printer was tripping. Yeah. Yeah. His printer was he tripping. got more than a drink. More than a drink. More than a... That is nuts. Yeah. That's really good stuff. So there's all these like crazy yeah. fun stories out there like that. But, you know, I... I, I it... You got to So I have a science podcast where like this is also I have to fight this inclination all the time, which is like some studies are so much fun. Yeah. And and, like come to such conclusions that are like so exciting and headline making and everything. Usually the reality is a bit more yeah. toward the boring yeah. side of, uh, yeah. of, what, uh, of what that attention grabbing stuff or, or like the most exciting news making studies yeah. don't replicate very well and, and that sort it on of thing. Four happens. Rats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane, so uh, <laughs> do, you, do you ever watch porn? <laughs> I, I don't think I've seen porn in like. Oh boy! Four years. Are you gonna show me porn? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> this is—it's it, it's not really about the I'm porn. I'm a big boy. I, I know you. I, 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 well, I mean, you don't have to brag. But, <laughs> <laughs> but this is about. Uh, this is a story. Uh, Hazel Moore is is a, is a fine porn actor. Big, uh, big fan at the show. A young uh, up-and-comer. I can't believe this is going to be my first time watching porn. <laughs> oh, boy. This is about the mind. It's, 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 not, it's not like I, like, was in porn rehab or anything like that. I just <laughs> no. I just one day had found that I, like, went for a week without porn, and then I was like, oh, I wonder how much longer I can go. Yeah. And then I just, like, never uh, felt like, my, it, and now we're about to bust pro- my... <laughs> it's a good probably job. a great healthy decision. But let's ruin that. But, yeah. but I just want you to listen to... Uh, I don't you know, think I'll fall. This is uh, wagon no. too hard. Four, four years? <laughs> four years? Something like that. So you don't know anything about this this whole new movement that's going on with our buddy uh, what's his what's his dick Greg Lansky yeah. Greg what's Lansky. his dick is that what <laughs> what's his, they're really you know there was well, let me just give you the truth I mean I, I think it was the stuff that started coming out the gross yeah like, the gross stuff oh this he, guy this guy did this he's being he, sexy again yeah he was it's like sexy have sex hot. be nice it's nice it doesn't have to be gross don't be a weirdo stop yeah. smacking yeah. and spitting yeah. Yeah. use yeah. nice cameras and yes. lights yeah, yeah. and, and yeah, give be nice to girls like it's not crazy. Yeah. You know, but anyway, so everybody was telling him, he's like, I want to do high budget. And they're like, it's all amateur and low cost. And he's like, no, he's like, I'm going to bring like 70s glamour back to porn. And he starts making this shit. And anyway, a uh, big one of them is uh, blacked, which is, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of interracial black men, white girls, petite, mm-hmm. usually blacked. And um, they just have like a little bit of a story to him, which is very sweet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But anyways, yeah, so I was like, oh, when I first met him, I didn't know yeah. what to think. Well, yeah. I'm glad because I, you know, if I was looking to get back into porn, now I have some nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy way into I'm it. hoping this uh, is like your first mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> porn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, this is your gateway yeah. back into porn. Yeah. Gateway? But uh, this is <laughs> gateway. Is that what you said? Uh, I shop there. Gateway. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a story about Im- impulsiveness, which is you know. I it's really important w- these days. As an impulsive person, <laughs> you tend to be more likely to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Ain't that the truth? Some people think that's just a solid just right business right. strategy. <laughs> to yeah. Some extent, they're right. I've gotten into a lot of trouble for my behavior. She gets into. She's so but impulsive. For every mistake. I've had at least two amazing experiences. Line up the shot. I've been dating two. this guy, Jax, for a couple weeks now. He's great, fun, you know, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> you know, yeah, the whole things. thing. Uh oh. Now I met his roommate, Terrence. Uh oh. T? T? It's a guy, T. Him, all I could think about was fucking him. <laughs> Is that pulse happen? control? Couldn't help out. I probably would could you? Same about Jax if I had met him after Terrence. Oh, we are just got he got a uh, That grass is greener yeah. or blacker. <laughs> blacker. <laughs> the black is blacker. I'm black. Or black. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, yeah, they go on with this bullshit for a minute. <laughs> but then, oh boy. Uh, dude, I can't believe that's the first porn I've seen in <laughs> no, four hold years. No, hold on, hold on, wait. And I didn't see any penetration No, no, you're, you're, or you're anything. not really going to see too and, much. And then, it was, and then I'm like. No, this is really. Oh, now I can't even say that I haven't watched porn. <laughs> like, that was tamer than Game of Thrones. No, 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 no. And you, uh, but I can no longer say. <laughs> it's all, you fell off the I wagon onto another wagon. <laughs> <laughs> wagon to wagon. Oh. <laughs> This is like. But making a move, or even just flirting mm. with him in the short window that we were together. So you know, she sees that, that her boyfriend, he's gone out for a right? run. Yeah, yeah. Back in a half hour. I think it's okay to flirt. Yeah. yeah. The in roommate? The short window. I mean, you've only been dating for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Nice place, though. I like how she talks like a mouse kind of full, too. Oh, whoops. Oh, here are my oh. underwear. Oh, God. I didn't mean to go in the fridge in my underwear. <laughs> but I, I was impulsively hungry. <laughs> oh, oh no, whoops. She... I'm, well, shit, I'm out here with my shirt off. God. Ah, crap. Don't spill I'm just the milk. Wearing... Don't yeah, we bump into each it. other on underwear day. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you spilled it again. Oh, oh my God. She can't stop. <laughs> Oh, oh, what's? Oh God! Oh, I'm already down here. I think oh, I made that oh. joke last time. <laughs> uh -huh. So you're not uh, as flirtatious now. I'm uh, not as flirtatious. <laughs> now that she's in person. <laughs> well, alone. Milk boner. <laughs> Milk boner. Oh, nasal reflex. <laughs> so they're kissing. It's really uh, hot. Uh -huh. Super hot. There's no, you know, every if you want, we... if you want to get a girl, just fucking spill a little bit of milk. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put some cocaine in the milk <laughs> and put it in her nose. It's a nasal reflux. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a vagina touch. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's an immature touch there. Now oh, listen, no, he's going right into it. Listen, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get to a segue here, and I need you guys to be perfectly okay. quiet for a second. Because I just need, Shane, I need you to completely hear and experience <laughs> the interaction that goes down when invariably this thing goes awry. Oh, okay. I need you to, I need you to, I need you to understand impulse control. Yeah, yeah. Watch. <laughs> yeah. This is her boyfriend's roommate. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god, baby, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh, How good is that pussy? You know how to pick them. You're not mad? You owe me. Always. <laughs> That's how Always. Always. That's how they yeah. work. Yeah. Out. You're not mad. <laughs> how good is that pussy? <laughs> hey, you know how to pick them. <laughs> Editing, yeah, she's immediately in there with you know the mouth yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, in 4K, uh, but I want to be 4K. So Shane, what I need to just talk to you about? Yeah, yeah. How can I control these impulses so I don't get two dicks in me out of nowhere? You know what I mean? Because I he loves going to the fridge in his tight little yeah. blue undies. Well, you wanna, uh, I mean, that's the thing is normally, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, the prefrontal cortex is the big, the major player that you're gonna hear about. I heard you guys reference. Thinius Gage uh, oh, yeah. on the podcast, so, so you know that, that that was the very start of learning about that and impulse control, and um, you know so so there's there's things that you can it, one it you know you're in good shape because the it, it fully matures around the age of 25. Uh -huh. She's that's also 20. the first part that starts deteriorating too. Really, which is like so you have this window in life where you have better impulse that's wh control. That's why all the people in the fucking in the old homes are fucking like crazy. And well, and it's it's not only that, but but you know when when people are saying like. Uh, and, you know, old people just say, like, this horribly racist shit or whatever. Yeah. And, and people will be like, oh, well, they just, like, know themselves, and they're from a different era, and they're blah, blah, blah. It, it's it's because they're yeah. actually, or their brain is degenerating, right. and they can no longer stop themselves yeah. from saying... Their filter's the, gone. It, their filter is gone. Yeah. And, and then their consciousness makes up the story after the fact to yeah. explain it. Um, but it's it's more like a very troubling Tourette's. Um, and, um, and so, you know, normally, I, you know, one of the best things you can do is exercise, but if you exercise, then you're going to look hotter. And then you're, 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 you're exercising, you're out of the house. Yeah, really? Right. It is one of the best things you can do for impulse control exercise. 
Absolutely. Yeah. No yeah. Way. Oxygenating the old brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, I can yeah, speak ab- as absolutely. a man working out, <laughs> just working out shit. You, you just like, you don't want to like go home and jerk off. And then there's a lot yeah, of like decision up. fatigue too. And, 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 um, and what, what they call ego fatigue, which is like a, if, if you say no to enough things, you, you, that takes so much energy ah. to inhibit mm-hmm. yourself that you eventually get worn down. So, so like they'll test people, like, if you tax the mind before people make a decision, they'll make a worse decision. So if you give someone a, if you give someone a test, you give someone an easy test and a hard test, um, or you know, two different this. people, <laughs> and then and then you have them to drop off the test, go walk across the hall, right. and uh, and and drop that test off. But on the way, they there's like a table with snacks, right. and they can pick whatever they want. If they took the easy test, they'll pick. They're more likely to pick the fruit or the healthy choice or whatever. Yeah. If they take the hard test, they're more likely to pick like the candy or the dirt dessert yeah. or whatever. And um, and so if there's like dicks there on that hallway <laughs> or whatever, and you had the hard test, you're yeah. gonna get fucked. Did I tell you? Um, did I, tell you uh, well, I didn't tell you anything because I never met you before. But <laughs> so you can't. So like you, like you're only gonna be able to say no so yeah. many times there's, in a day. There's just and so you have to be you have to be careful. And then that's again that's kind of like the exercise thing where like yeah, exercise is gonna lead to better impulse control, but then you're gonna be sexier. Right. Same thing was saying no if you say no people want to women enough that's only gonna drive them crazier yeah. and then you're gonna have to then say well, more, and you gotta go, and go to then, sears and yeah. get a five horsepower motor you got, i mean go to yeah. sears regardless <laughs> yeah, because but, you're going out of business yeah, you go to sears. <laughs> you'll remember you'll, you'll go to sears right now yeah, you're gonna get a bargain <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna, you won't be able to control gonna your impulses this, you're gonna remember that day <laughs> yeah. i see you're looking at the simian five <laughs> I, I, I was in. We're the, going out of business. I was in the last Sears to exist. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I, I've still got the blue jeans. I, uh, <laughs> I, I saw this this study that I think is really really fascinating because you know people say things like you know uh, exercise should be just like its own thing that you enjoy and not a punishment for what you eat. Mm. And they had this study where it was just like people were just like walking on a boardwalk, and it was like, all right, here's the deal. You're going to walk this far on this boardwalk. When you get to this, like, fucking uh, center at the end of it, we're going to have lunch. And, uh, you know, it's just exercise, you know, for you to burn off weight, whatever. That was group one. Mm -hmm. Group two, same thing. We're going to go on this walk. When you get to the end, there's going to be lunch. And it was like, just, you know, enjoy the scenery. It's just like a fun walk and listen to music and, like, have a good time. And everybody in the second group, when they got to lunch ate all of the healthier options mm. because everybody in the first group was basically told like this like, is work this is work yeah and yeah, it's like yeah, punitive yeah, 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 and yeah. they felt like a need to reward uh, the work yeah you yeah, know? yeah yeah it's uh it's it's amazing how much just like the conditioning yeah reframing things yeah. you know it's like yeah i find personally that i have better impulse control when i am working out more mm-hmm. because I don't want to have wasted it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, but like when I'm out of shape, I'm just like, fuck it. What's another, yeah, what's yeah. another bag of Skittles? Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, they got it, three it's apple the now. weird stories that you tell yourself yeah. of like, yeah. well, what's I'm already one? like drinking and smoking cigarettes, so I might as well <laughs> eat the worst burger too. It's like, well, actually, yeah. those yeah. don't. <laughs> what's a bit of Jenga in the mix? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that you have to eat McDonald's sure. because you're doing everything else wrong. No, I wanted to ask you one thing. This is the number one question I wanted to ask you. In the midst of all of the madness that was going down, mm. do you remember one singularly, absolutely batshit thought you had where you're just like, well, I'm a turtle. <laughs> like, was yeah. there anything like that where you were just like, something really daffy that in hindsight you're like, man, that was that was me, that was me really on the edge. Oh there. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, know? yeah. I, I think I shared this on Theo's on too. Did you? And, and I uh, probably probably the craziest <laughs> thing was. So I mean, it's kind of a long story, and I'll try to just make it really quick. Uh, was that uh, the? I, I kept on having these bizarre things happen to me, and it was, and it was like these. Um, um, 
prophecies that were given to me during these trips that were seemingly coming true. It was mm-hmm. probably, you know, I'm sure a lot of confirmation bias mm-hmm. and whatnot. But um, regardless, these, these like completely asinine like lottery ticket type things kept on happening and so it was like making me feel i was like am i dead already is this a simulation is this some truman show shit like how is this stuff actually happening uh to me just like the most bizarre stuff and so i landed on time travel as a Mm -hmm. possibility and that there was things that i was doing that was passing messages to people in the future that were going back in time to influence my life and so and if the right person in the future got the right message and and then it was ways of like hiding my my messages and then and then it got into like well eventually they'll be able to like go back in time and reconstruct every like molecule and where it was and everything so all these like traces of of my dna at like certain times and use this this timing of this code that i was picking up on i was testing it by like putting things in my podcast at certain times and then seeing if i uploaded it if if things in the environment seemed to change once something was on the internet wow and uh and stuff like that and it's seem to like be happening and and then um your dr manhattan and then uh and so and so the craziest thing was there was like this strange when i was in a psych ward for like a week there was this really um strange i mean a lot of things happened that were strange there but there's a strange old crazy lady and and like there was something that i was like i was thinking about like um it, it, there there was also things about my dna um needing to be passed on or something like that mm-hmm. but but it needed to be but it couldn't like be my kid cuz they'd be able to find and then and <laughs> there's all this fucking crazy stuff and and so somehow i can and talking with this other crazy old i came up with the idea that like um that i was like oh i know what to do <laughs> Um, uh, uh, this is because when you're in a psych ward talking with other crazy, oh people, yeah, echo chamber, like, ball, echo chamber, kicks crazy. it up a notch. Yeah. 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 And and um, and and I was like, oh, as this insurance policy, I, like I know this is crazy. Like everything that I was doing, I was like, I know this <laughs> no. is crazy, but just in case humor it me. works, humor yeah. me, you know, you know, like much in the way people read horoscopes <laughs> yeah. but don't like really believe in it. But okay, I'll read it anyway. Know. <laughs> so the craziest one was I decided that if I like came in the shower at like a certain time <laughs> Be able to, so I like uh-huh. ran to like go masturbate <laughs> in the shower yeah. at, for like this insurance policy. I'll be right and back, then, lady. We'll pick this up in a minute. And then, and then, and then like right when I came, I just Let's hear see. this old lady in some other room just yell, like a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, she what? knows I'm doing it as I'm an like, insurance policy. Oh like, my god. What's happening right now? <laughs> you know what I think? <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh, yeah. Man. Was, it was, oh. I mean, shit got real fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, shit went off the rails a little bit. Yeah. So, and, and, very, and, and your um, girlfriend was like, just don't, don't talk My about t- time travel in the house. My girlfriend was super annoyed. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean I was like, probably justifiably. But also, I think... Well, you, she was a social worker, too, and so she was, like, used to dealing with crazy people, uh-huh. and she's just like, <laughs> I gotta yeah, come I home, home to this. <laughs> More work for me. And I'd be jumping off a no, cliff in Jamaica. I, like I wasn't sleeping, but that would meant like no one was sleeping because I'd have these grand ideas in the uh, middle of the night. And yeah, like, fears would come up, and, I, and like all these crazy things. Yeah. So it was like it was wearing on her a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got put in a psych ward against my will. And then, yeah. Uh, and uh, which is like. 
not the best thing no. for getting your sanity no. back. No. Uh, sure. Is a, well, well, it's conspiracy it's psych it's, war, at yeah. that point. You know, fact, the, if you're paranoid already to put someone in a I, prison, uh, yeah. basically, where like yeah. people are then like monitoring them and there's cameras around and they're taking notes. Yeah. On your, and they're showing your cum in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, but, shower. but those guys are from the future. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> they're all beasts. Some, some of them. <laughs> I have to come in. <laughs> That, that's, a, that's the thing. How do you know what message to send to what person? I don't know what year I was born. Well, I don't know if this cum goes to the past. I, if I turn the left faucet on, if I turn the sink to hot and I spit in that and I come over there. It's like you hated guns up porn. Yeah, yeah like this will be like the, maybe if I take some of my armpit and rub it on a pole, that'll be like a, the red herring for the people in, in the future that I don't want and then I'll come over over there, so the guy that's actually trying to help me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back, oh my get me God. out. Of that is yeah. some Philip K. Dick. Just paranoia. Yeah, sci-fi. Here's genius. there's some like in, really distillable if I moments. I ever write it all out. It's gonna be quite the story. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> still like troubled enough by it that it's hard for me to. Is, like, are you really? I don't mind talking about it, but when I try to write it, you, it's like oof, if, if you if you think about boy. it for a minute, yeah. is is there parts of your mind that are still like. No, that shit is valid. That that shit is kind of true. I mean, there's stuff that I can't explain very well, yeah. but I mean, that's... but I mean, like, do you have like hard hunches from your experience where you're like, no, there's something to that that was such a vibrant experience. No, and most of that is just because like things went so off the rails. I think I was onto a few things for a little while, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then things went so off the rails yeah. that, that that whole period of time is just like I think a there... very big mm. black mark in. Yeah, in you gotta my, give up on uh, all your yeah, anti gravity like, research. But yeah, there, there, yeah. there is, you I throw think, it all like, I... like, like uh, it's uh, like Freud burning burning the nose fucking stuff. Yeah, so that his other stuff can be like, hey, it's like eh. yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I think there there's might a, there's... have been something to the nose fucking. Yeah, but if it, right. I can't be too public about sure, it because sure. because then I'm the nose fucking yeah, guy yeah. and people don't take me seriously I, for all the other insights. There's that a I have. there's a sweet spot I think for sure <laughs> where uh like you know my my former uh my former work colleagues had an experience with uh, bipolar and they would rack up patents you know what i mean mm-hmm. and there was there was it a, must be so a sweet fucking spot. annoying to be in like a patent office in san francisco or something <laughs> like that by the way especially on like bicycle day like april 19th the celebration of <laughs> albert uh, yeah i figured it out yeah yeah, well, I'm gonna turn toast into bread. <laughs> yeah, but they had they had some legit stuff Entropy toaster. <laughs> that made them like a ton of money. Yeah, but then you know, you go a little too long without sleep, and then it goes yeah, yeah, in, yeah. into a place where you are just talking nonsense. But yeah. there's a sweet spot. There is a a sweet spot. And and a lot of it's like a lot of people are just such cowards that they just don't take many risks in life. So really like just taking risks and having the balls to take some risks can often be rewarded just (laughs) by society and financially and everything else. (laughs) Even if they're maybe not the best ideas, even if, uh, I mean, look what fucking confidence can do to a person in like a politician or Wall Street trader, just having an air about you people are so insecure that they're like well that guy seems to yeah. Yeah, he, be he, very he, confident in show. what he's yeah. what he's saying so therefore maybe yeah. he knows what he's yeah. talking yeah. about yeah i'm certainly not that confident in anything that i'm thinking so fuck i guess yeah. that person the, the, has it my, figured uh, out my 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 aunt betty is She's just the most meek woman you could ever meet you know she talks like this she's from county Kerry in ireland she says <laughs> She'd go up to you, like, if she, if she just met you, Shane, she'd go up to you and she'd go, Have you seen the uh, film? <laughs> 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 I've seen the film she, of these Scottish women. And she'd go, um, what, do you, what do you think happens when we die? <laughs> like, like question one. Yeah, and one yeah. time she was dropping that type of shit on like one of my friends she just met. She goes, <laughs> out the gate. Yeah. She goes, don't you think like... It'll never be like another Van Gogh with all the psychiatric medicine we have these days. Yeah. And I was like, great question. That's a great, that's that's a a great solid question. Drop. You know? 
And they were like, huh? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I just met this old lady. <laughs> and she's asking me if psychiatric medicine is ruining uh, art and science and advancement yeah. in general. I love that thought. Uh, it sounds yeah. like she's a great just question. a deep thinker. It is, but, you know, it's... I like people that don't pressure. talk much. I like a meek... Mm-hmm. I have a fondness for that. I was a very, very... I was, I was the shyest kid you'd ever meet. Mm-hmm. And then I used to just, like, I'd be very careful with my words and when mm-hmm. I'd say something. And then and when I did say something, it was usually significant. Useful, yes. And then, and, and then no small build talk. a career doing that. Well, yeah. But then once you build a career doing that, people are like, talk, talk more. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> now I'm just going to be another fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spent 10 years writing these 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want more? <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot of drugs. <laughs> Where's yeah, the shower? <laughs> uh, you want to call it there? Yeah, yeah, that was great. Shane. That was Thank great. You, Chain, Thank you for uh, yeah, the time. We, uh, we loved having you. Uh, this was a wonderful show. You're a wonderful guest, and uh, we Anytime. were really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I, this is fantastic. I'm so happy that you have a new listener, too. You guys are super funny. <laughs> Thanks, And man. also, I apologize, but just because of everything that I've shared uh, on this podcast today, I am going to have to come and piss my way out of, <laughs> out of this, the, the whole way out of the studio. I'm going to be I'm going to be leaving all sorts of red crumbs. Red crumbs? <laughs> yeah. you, you're leaving a trail of bread crumbs for you. I'm going to keep coming Not until, bre- you- until <laughs> bread comes out of there. So they know where to find me. Yeah. The good ones, uh, the bad ones. ones. <laughs> Be <laughs> they from the past or the future. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, and just remind everybody once again what you Psychonaut have. is out on Amazon Prime yeah. and on Tubi. Yeah. Or not to be. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> to be is a there. free streaming thing where the, like it's you'll be watching a movie and you're like, oh hell yeah, Cube is dope. And then like a commercial, you'll be like, ah, oh, to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking piece of shit. Tubi. <laughs> you <laughs> rascal. But it's it has weird good shit and uh your your yeah, uh your Psychonautics, f- a comics exploration of psychedelics for the movie. Uh Shane Moss, M A U S S dot com. Uh my podcast is here the Here We Are podcast, new episode, different scientists, different topic each week. My live Live tour is stand up science, which I did about a hundred of them last year. So I'm usually in three to four cities a week wow. doing that show. If that sounds exhausting, you're correct. <laughs> and then I have a uh, psychedelic version of it called Head Talks that I tour with in uh, in select cities. That is excellent. Where that is narcs. That is a lot of that is a lot of shit, That's man. I, it's it's not a. It's just a time thing. It's not a city thing. I go through everywhere. In fact, I try to go through. Like I just did two cities in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I just I just went through all of the Bible Belt with my psychedelic show. I intentionally try to target the areas yeah. um, that need it the most. It's just. You and Sturgill, <laughs> yeah, you and Sturgill yeah. blazing a trail <laughs> across I, the I, south. I, I, I keep passing Sturgill <laughs> on the interstate. Any, any, uh, any tip? <laughs> just, <laughs> any tip? <laughs> yeah, just trying to be Johnny Mushroom Spore. Over here. <laughs> so. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, but, let's just say I'm leaving some bread <laughs> <laughs> all, all over, all, all over the Bible Belt. Oh God, pages are sticking together. <laughs> God, it's not a belt anymore. It's a belt. Yeah. You know what these abortion billboards need? <laughs> yeah. Some bread <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's so get the gross. fuck out of here. Uh, I'm going to say goodnight. I love you. My name is John Fahey. My name is Aaron Pita. Mapperso. And our great guest tonight, Shane Moss. Woo! We love you, everybody. Good night. Good Thank night. you. Star Bands Avenue.